Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed, live from L.A. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp. We're pretty festive around here. Good morning, guys. A little scary mm. behind me, but mm. we'll figure Come that out later. Skip, how much all this cost? Yeah, because I think this came out of you in our pocket. Mm. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Better not come out of mine. Uh, it looks how, good. How are you, Jenny? I'm good. How are good. you? How are you, Shannon? Hey, how good? If, if you heard the expression, whistling through the graveyard, mm-hmm. that's what you do every day on this show. You whistle through your own graveyard. So, it's okay. So no, in other it's words, nobody, no one hears. Yeah. Uh-uh. Morning. Oh, where did you go? How, How are you? Skip? I knew okay. he'd have some way oh. to frame this. Yeah, he, he always. <laughs> why you just can't be nice on a Monday morning? I thought that framed everything about Undisputed. That summed it up. You better come prepared because he's whistling through the graveyard. Okay. <sighs> well done. Your day coming. Well done. Well. We have a lot to get to today. We have a packed show. And get this, Skip is not happy with Michael Jordan, which makes really? first. Then we've got Shannon. He might be losing faith in first cousins. But we are going to start with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. They nearly pulled off a huge upset against the undefeated Rams here in L.A. Todd Gurley led the Rams' comeback with nearly 200 total yards. He set up the go-ahead field goal in the fourth quarter. The Packers were about to get the ball back with about two minutes left. But Ty Montgomery fumbled the kickoff, and the Rams ran out the clock. Mike Silver of NFL.com reported that Rodgers was extremely upset with Montgomery for returning the kick, saying on the sidelines, quote, take a bleeping knee. Here's more from Rodgers after the game. Very disappointing. Uh, you know, that play didn't lose the game, but it definitely uh, took away an opportunity for us to go down and, uh, and win it. It sounded like a home game at times for us. The crowd was fantastic. Um, I <laughs> uh, don't really expect that, maybe in L.A., but I know they had five uh, L.A. teams playing today, so I was glad the Packer fans showed up. They were fantastic, great energy. Just disappointed we couldn't get one last drive. Okay, Shannon, should Aaron be upset with Ty Montgomery? He should be, but not just Aaron. The entire team should be upset with mm-hmm. Ty Montgomery because he put himself, he put himself above the team. Uh, he wanted to be the hero. Mm-hmm. Now, it's being reported, Skip, that on a series before – that he was upset that he was taken out of the ball game. Um, I hope that's not the case. Also, there were some reports that he was told to take the knee. Now, Skip, this is the difference between Mike McCarthy and Coach Belichick. In 2015, they were a very similar situation. The Giants had gone down, kicked the field goal, gone up by two points over the New England Patriots. They kick off, and guess what the returner did? He took a knee. Because what Ty Montgomery did is that he robbed him, really, of two timeouts because it was on the other side of the two-minute warning. Because time is of the essence in a situation like this. You have Aaron Rodgers. Maybe if you have a lesser-tier quarterback, Skip, you want to get as many yards as you possibly can to shorten the, 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 the distance that that guy would have to go. But this is Aaron Rodgers. I believe he's the best quarterback currently playing in the National Football League. There's a lot of debate. At this table, we go back and forth. He says Brady, I say Aaron Rodgers. Mm, that but was more, blasphemy. What it ain't blasphemy. Started. Stop yeah, saying well, blasphemy. You're, you're whistling in the we're, graveyard. We're you're whistling lightning. in the graveyard. Yeah, yeah. You're whistling uh-uh. in the graveyard. You're asking for a lightning strike. <laughs> no, I'm strike. not. And if you look at some of the throws that he was making during the course of the game, mm-hmm. he was flicking the ball, falling off, you know, falling backwards, off his back foot, throwing the ball 40 yards on a dime. Hit Devontae Adams twice, one up, uh, once up the rail, once in the middle of the field, caught the, uh, the safety nap, and he threw the ball over his head. Mm-hmm. So he was, he, was, he was very, very good yesterday. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't have a 400-yard game like he had the previous two ball games, but I thought he threw the ball very, very well mm-hmm. going up against that front seven. Um, that was getting some pressure uh, from time to time on him. I just believe had Ty Montgomery taken the knee, it was on the other side of the two minutes, so Aaron Rodgers was going to get an opportunity to run at least one play before the two-minute warning. Now he can go to the sideline, talk to Mike McCarthy, and say, this is what we want to do. This is how we're going to go about doing it. So uh, not only should Aaron Rodgers be upset, but the entire team should be upset at Ty Montgomery because I thought Ty Montgomery in this situation, and this is not hindsight, I tweeted it. You take a knee in that situation, Aaron Rodgers is your quarterback, and you let him go down and win it. And I I believe he robbed Ty Montgomery, not saying that this cost him the game, but I believe he robbed them of an opportunity Mm. to possibly win this game. Hmm. 
which is exactly what Aaron Rodgers said after the game, which is typical of Aaron Rodgers because he is notorious for throwing various teammates under bus and not taking enough of the blame himself. And this was classic Aaron Rodgers because I would like to point out to all those who maybe didn't get to watch the game, the Green Bay Packers were two of nine on third down yesterday. Is that great? No. No. Jared Goff had a QBR of 67, which is just pretty good. It's a little above average. Aaron Rodgers had a QBR yesterday of 60, so he got outplayed, according to QBR, by Jared Goff. Is that good? Not great, especially when you're, quote, unquote, the greatest quarterback who ever played, right? Well, what, what if I want to – you use QBR, mm-hmm. I'm going to use mm-hmm. passer rating. The passer rating said it was 102.9. Okay. okay. Well, I'm just going with QBR, which is a much more effective and all-encompassing rating of a quarterback's play for the whole day. So I'm going to go with this one, okay. 67 to 60. So, we get back to Aaron Rodgers, who is classic for finger-pointing and blame-deflecting. And in this case, I don't know exactly what happened, but to your point about Michael Silver of NFL.com, he did write that on the previous series, Ty Montgomery was in the game. Well, Ty Montgomery only played six offensive plays the whole game, so this was one of six plays, and he has fallen somewhat out of favor, as you know, because... There have been times when Ty Montgomery has made some big little plays for this team. He's been pretty good uh, out of Stanford. He's 6 feet, 218 pounds. He ran a 4-5-40 at the combine, was a third-round pick. So he's he's a big, powerful, but but also he's got some some speed to him. Well, Skip, you remember when Eddie Lacy got banged up, the other running backs, he was a wide receiver. Running with number 88 in the backfield, he rushed for 100 yards a couple times. Still wearing a wide receiver number. (laughs) And I remember back in 2016 in the game at Lambeau against my Cowboys, he caught 10 for 93, which is pretty good. And in that that playoff game at Jerry World, he he was good in that game. Mm -hmm. He had 11 rushes for only 47 yards, but he had some big third down runs. So Mm -hmm. so he can make some plays. Right. And he has definitely fallen out of favor. So – he was in on first and 10 at the Green Bay 21 in the previous series. And if, if we have that play, th- this is the play that made him angry. So this is going to lead to what happened at the end of the mm-hmm. game. But if we have the first and 10 play, Aaron got a little pressure in his face and he threw low and outside to Ty Montgomery here over on the sideline. So it wasn't a very good pass by Aaron's standards. Correct. He didn't really have a chance to catch this ball. And as he jogs back to the huddle, in comes Aaron Jones. Right. Number 33 is back in the game and right. he's going to carry on next play. And so Ty Montgomery is basically finished for the game. Right. And according to, again, Michael Silver's article, he went over and slammed... Oops, I Slam lost my notes. So, uh, I'm going to get my notes real quick here. So he slammed his helmet on the, on the ground... Now I'm back in business. You're yeah, back. you see, you see, he has to have those notes to do what he does. I don't need no notes. I don't need notes. You don't need notes. Yeah, you, throw yeah. Them all wait, the wait, way. wait, wait, wait. Can we show your notes? Show them. Show them. They're There's nothing typed wrong with for notes. him. Somebody types up his I answers have no idea. for him. I don't. I don't I, need. I, notes. I do my mine. All mine. They're all mine. These are all mine. They're just yeah, typed. All mine. I write mine out. Mine are just typed. I see, I know. Mine I are just no typed. Types is mine are professional. Okay, that's what professionals. So here's the point. So Ty Montgomery, according to Michael Silver, slams his helmet on the sideline, Mm -hmm. and he's furious, and it's possible he rebelled. It's possible he mutinied against the team and against the coaching staff. But now let's get to the play in question. The kickoff, by any standard, any special teams coach would tell the returner to return that kickoff unless you had told him to take a knee. But it was very dicey because all the reports said it was two yards deep. If we could see this one more time, tell me that's two yards deep. He catches it running forward at the goal line. Yeah, he, so, so it's returnable. It's right. not like he was five yards deep and he, he hesitated oh, for a second. You know, this is one where I'm, I'm telling him, look, he caught it at the goal line. He caught it at the goal line, right on the goal line with, with momentum. Okay, so is that a bad play? Is it real close to could you kneel? Would you kneal on In the goal that line? that situation, okay. it's a bad play. Okay. If it's first quarter, second quarter, okay. third I, I, quarter. I got it. But it, it's so close that once he moves forward to catch the ball, I'm, I'm just tell, as you well know, in these circumstances with that much pressure on you, it's hard to process quickly. Like in in his in the back of his mind, he might be thinking, "Wait a second, can I kneel? I don't want to kneel on the goal line. You know that would be a disaster." He went to Stanford, right? Huh? He, he went, went to Stanford. Stanford. Okay. And by the way, Stanford is the arch rival of Cal, where Aaron Rodgers and Jared Goff. Oh, so you trying oh, to say he sabotaged? Oh, it. maybe he sabotaged the Cal quarterback. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. But you never know about that. The Stanford that probably, band play, huh? That probably made Aaron Rodgers even madder that the Stanford guy 
you know, robbed him yeah. of a chance at the end of the game. Yeah. And I agree with you. I, I was deflated. Who wasn't deflated? I sat back because I wanted to see. Again, sure. it's one thing to go against the San Francisco Rams defense. Uh, I mean, San Francisco 49ers defense because th they're ranked 31st, and that's what he did against C.J. Beathard that mm -hmm. night. He, right. he brought them back. And, and the Bears defense is pretty good. It's ranked 11th in points allowed. That was opening night. Mm -hmm. He brought them back. This is – this is a little harder, yeah. and, and the Rams aren't quite what I thought they were going to be cracked up to be right. on defense. But again, if you got it first and ten at the twenty-five right. with two, 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 two I think five, it was two six, yeah, something and, like that, and a timeout left, and you got the two-minute warning. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you, you got a, ch you, you yes. got all your ammunition. You got all that you would need for Aaron Rodgers to go make plays to set up. Every bro every blade of grass is in play. The middle of the field, you don't have to just worry about where well, they're going to try to keep, they're going to guard the rails. Everything is in play. Yeah. So the point is, did he try to make a play or did he sabotage? I, I don't know for sure. Did, did he just get it in his head that heck with all them, I'm just going to, if I have a chance, I'm going to try to make a play because I'm on the outs anyway. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what some coaches would do today. He would, oh, he cut. He'd be cut. This, yeah, this is a fireable offense. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so this will be very interesting to see if he makes it through the day because it's not usually Mike McCarthy's M.O. unless Aaron Rodgers just puts his foot down and says, mm -hmm. I can't play with that guy right. anymore. Right? Yeah, but Skip, here's a situation, and I get what you're saying, but maybe in the first three quarters, but in the situation like this, Time is of the essence. We don't need you to be a hero. The hero is about to run on the field wearing a number 12 jersey. That's the hero. Mm -hmm. That's the guy you want. Skip, you, you dream from moments like this to have an opportunity to have a Brady, to have a Rodgers, to have a Drew Brees come mm -hmm. onto the field when all you need is a field goal and you got 206, the two minute warning, and a timeout at your disposal. Mm -hmm. So, which meaning that everything, the middle of the field, check down, run the ball, everything is in play. And he robbed them of that opportunity. Why in that situation? The, that is the difference. Mike McCarthy and Coach Belichick, maybe you're right. Let's just say, well, you know what, Skip Bayless, I want to agree with you. I'm going to say, you know what, Skip, you're right. Maybe they didn't tell him. Maybe they should have told him. But I would like to think that you would know situation. It was my job. Mike and Gary Kubiak, my offensive coordinator head coach, couldn't tell me every situation. I had to know the situation. Yep. I needed to know down in distance. I need to know where we were on the area of the field to make sure because they got enough things going on. They're, not only are they calling that play, mm -hmm. they're thinking about, okay, if we don't get anything on first down, or if we get five yards, what are we going to run on second down? What could we possibly do on third down? So they got, all, they got enough on their plate. Let me take some of that off of their plate. Ty Montgomery, I believe, was upset at his lack of playing time. I believe that he got upset that Aaron Rodgers threw a ball in the dirt and he, Aaron turned his back like, bro, what are you doing? That wasn't a very good throw. Mm -hmm. But I can assure you, every quarterback would have felt like Aaron felt had the returner did what he did in that I, situation. I, I would agree. So, step back from this. How impressed were you with either team? Let me tell you how I felt about that. The Packers' defense shocked me yesterday. Yes, yes. Only because Zaire Alexander, Jair Alexander, I'm sorry, sure. was um, he, he, he finally is healthy and he's going to be a big-time player. So, you have – a Packers defense that is going to put them back on the map in that division, which is crumbling. So it's theirs to win. Yes. We're going to talk about Minnesota here mm -hmm. in a little bit. But on the other side, I'm just not sold on the Rams. And I believe the Rams are going to go lose at New Orleans next Sunday. Which would wow. be no shame. And, really? Yeah. And then their schedule gets rough because they got the Seahawks at home, and that's not going to be a cakewalk. No. It's a division game, and the Seahawks have suddenly caught Fire. There's no love lost between these two yep, teams. No, no love loss. And then it's Kansas City at Mexico City on a Monday night. That won't be any cakewalk for sure. And then they have to go to Detroit, go to Chicago, and they got the Eagles. Those are next six games. That's hard, man. That's that. Those but are if, a bunch of losable games. But if I, if they're as good as I think they are, they'll they'll be okay. Um, could they lose one of those games? Could they lose two of those games? Yes, I don't see them losing uh, more than two of those games. Skip, when I look at this team, I think they're great offensively. They can run the ball with Todd Gurley. And if you look, I thought Green Bay did a great job, Skip, because they did a lot of run blitzing, and they put more pressure on Jerry Goff. They got hits. They even took him down because what the Rams like to do, they like to push the ball down the field. In order for you to push the ball down the field, Skip, you need five and seven-step drops. And the Packers took that into account, and they brought gas.
Mm. And so they were able to get to him and, 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 and take him down a few times. But Todd Gurley made some heck of a catches. He made a heck of a run. <laughs> because what you want to see, Skip, in a situation like this, you have a lead. And everybody have this is what we call a four-minute offense. We either get a touchdown or we run the clock out. Mm -hmm. But no way, no how will Aaron Rodgers ever see this ball again. The next time Aaron Rodgers come on the field, it is to shake my quarterback's hand and go mm -hmm. to the locker room. That's yep. it. And they had done a great job balling up Todd Gurley. But remember, we talked about this. It's tough sled. He get one yard here. He get three yards there. And every once in a while, he get a four-yard gain. But when the rubber needed to meet the road, because if you remember, Skip, on first third down, they had what they call a jet sweep to mm -hmm. Robert Wood. And they call, and it looked like he had something, and they called a timeout. And everybody jumped like, we had it. We had what we wanted. Sean McVay said, I got something even better. Mm -hmm. He said, I got something better. He said, a TG handle at TG for 100. Mm -hmm. So what that means, Skip, baby, he going to get you 100 yards. They say, look here, mm -hmm. I need you to go get me this first down. Mm -hmm. And he had a chance for a, a touchdown. But he said, you know what? This is what TG was thinking. And, he, you know, great minds think alike. He said, now, I could go get this touchdown and make it an eight-point game. But what if my field goal kick missed a PAT? So now I give Aaron Rodgers the ball back with a chance to get a touchdown and two-point conversion to timing. Mm -hmm. How about I do this? I'm going to go and get close, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go and lay this thing down. Mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers, you're not getting this ball back. Not the first time I've seen that play. But that, that's not here. We're not yeah. talking about that. Okay. But D, let's go special teams. Mm -hmm. Special teams, they're very good. Mm -hmm. Johnny Hecker, Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. Legatron, Greg Z By the Zerla. way, Johnny Hecker can throw it, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That, and see, it keeps you on your P's and Q's mm -hmm. because Sean Payton is looking to steal a possession. He's under that Sean, he's from that Sean Payton, Sean McVay. Mm -hmm. Sean McVay is from the Sean P Payton he playbook. Yep. He will steal a possession for his offense, mm -hmm. that defensively. They're going to get a keep to lead back. Um, secondary skill, mm, it's, it's concerning at times, but I believe once they get a, a keep to lead back. But let me tell you something. They got a guy in the middle. And he might go a stretch or two, might go two series, and they won't call his name. But, boy, when you need him to make a play, that number 99, Skip Bayless, mm -hmm. you say you look for a guy to flash. I you do. look for a guy to jump off your screen. Mm -hmm. But when they needed a play, they say, we need, to get, we need you to get Aaron Rodgers off the field. Did he not come through with flying mm -hmm. colors? He's been flashing the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. He didn't for the first four. But the last two or three, yes. And allow me to say this publicly. We've gone back and forth about who's the best running back in the National Football League, and I'm here to say right now, oh. the running back who is playing the best is this running back, Todd Gurley. Oh, no, 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 he's don't playing do the best. Yeah, don't do no caveat. I, I still don't think he's the best, but again, how can I defend Ezekiel Elliott when he's running nowhere fast week after week after week? He's running in mud. He's running in quicksand. And this guy is just exploding on everybody. There are and he exploded on Green Bay yesterday. There's a lot of guys that can run for yards. But this guy does does one does you one better. He runs for yards and he scores your touchdown. And he can catch it. Oh! Mm -hmm. So can my guy if they threw it to him ever, but they They don't. threw it to him in the end zone mm -hmm. against Washington. Mm -hmm. Can you tell the people at home what happened? He should have caught the ball. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. He should have did. But what happened? He dropped I, it. I just said he should have caught the did ball. Did he drop? I prefer you say dropped it. He should have caught it. Yeah, exactly. It. That's mm -hmm. what I thought. But Skip, Not an easy catch, but he should have caught Skip, it. Skip, stop doing that. It well, wasn't easy. Wasn't so, so, so now you want him easy catch it? Now, he had walk it to him. Mm. That's a long handoff. Yeah, so. But we're going to talk about him a little later. Well, also. Are we? Yes, are we ever? Yes, we are. But, Skip, mm -hmm. I, I think this team, because they're, I believe they're great offensively, they're great mm -hmm. defensively, I think they're middle of the road. They get to lead back. Because I think they're well coached in all three areas. I they love are. Wade Phillips, they defensive are. coordinator. I do, too. John Bones, a uh, 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 fossil. He was the ball boy when oh, I was in Denver in 93 and 94. He, he does a good job. He does, a, And Sean McVay mm -hmm. is as good an offensive mind as that you'll see in the National mm -hmm. Football League. He is. I mean, he, smart. you yep. know, it, Josh McDaniels and Sean Payton. Sean McVay ranked fair, mm -hmm. favorably with those guys. Mm -hmm. Skip, they're legit. Mm. They're legit. So, uh, to your point about Todd Gurley, that was a really smart play, and it was a cool play for him just to say, I give up. And it was a tribute in part to Aaron Rodgers. I'm not even going to give him a chance. But most, most coaches can try to coach that. And in the moment, you're not really prepared for it. Mm -hmm. But he's got presence of mind just to say, no, I'm going down. Did it help the fantasy owners? It did not. Did it help the gamblers? It did. If you had the nine. He had yeah. the nine. Ooh, if you had the nine. Nope. Nope, it did not. <laughs> but did it help his team? It just ended the football game. And there's a chance, Skip. Now, you know he's on pace to break LT's mm -hmm. total yard, total touchdown record from scrimmage. Yep. Now, he might look back when he, he finished the season with 30, 
and says that one that I left on the you field. Think so? Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think he's built like that. We've had him on the show. I, I think he's a team guy. Oh, I believe he's a team uh, guy. Yeah, he I did. don't I don't sense any diva. I don't no, no. me first. I, he, I don't he's sense. a team guy and that mm -hmm. moment that was the best thing for the team. Mm -hmm. But there's gonna come a time that, you know, you look mm -hmm. back like, man, I could have had thirty one. Yep. Cause, you know, tied with LT is different than being one below LT. Yep. So, big picture on Aaron Rodgers. Was he robbed of a chance? Yes, he was. But let's not lose sight of the fact he's not having a very good year. I'm going to say it again. His QBR ranks 21st in the National Football League. That's below Alex Smith. Check down Alex. That's below Jameis, who we're going to talk about later. And that's below even Mitchell Trubisky. He's not having a his kind of year. That should tell you right there everything you need to know about mm -hmm. QBR. Yep. Because what person in the National Football League, what fan, even in those markets, Chicago, Tampa, or whomever, would take those quarterbacks over Aaron Rodgers? They're just like LeBron fans. They're blind witnesses. No. Blind witnesses. I'm saying, you, let me ask you, I mm -hmm. guarantee you, you take every Chicago Bear fan, I guarantee you, you will not find one Chicago Bear fan that says, I would rather have Mitch Trubisky they won't. over Aaron Rodgers. But let's just frame it with the fact he, his QBR is 54, which is barely above average. Skip, and look, they are, th what, 3-3-1 three, three and one now? But Skip, look yeah. at his, Skip, look at his numbers. Hmm. What does his numbers tell you? He's a 500 quarterback. That's no, what, what is it? If he, 500? If, if he's a 500 really? quarterback, so what is that? Huh. Well, he's below 500. But uh, what, oh, what, 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 are we, are we, did okay. you just put Dak in the same no, place with Aaron no, no. Rodgers? No, he, he belongs. Be he belongs. Thank you, because he's outplayed Aaron Rodgers. Every time they've I met, all three times. I can't put him in Thank that. You. I can't Thank put him you. in Aaron Rodgers because Aaron that. Rodgers, you told me, is average. Mm -hmm. Your guy is below average, mm -hmm. yeah. so I have to put him in the box with the below average guy. Oh. That's why I guess where he has to go. But Skip mm -hmm. Bayless, you need to stop this. Mm -hmm. You need to stop because we've seen guys throw for three hundred and, and, and three or four touchdowns mm -hmm. and have a lower QBR than a guy that throws for it. Has an, yeah, has and I'll pick it. it apart and I'll show you why. I, We're I about to do that with your guy, Kirk Cousins. I don't Is he still your guy? No, I don't know. Jenny, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Jenny, I don't know if Jenny, I can be on this Jenny, anymore. Jenny, don't, don't let Skip Bayless. I'm going to tell you what happened you and sure? why it happened. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. But Aaron Rodgers, has, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers should be upset at Ty mm -hmm. Montgomery because I believe he took matters into his own hands, which was unnecessary mm -hmm. at this point. Think of all those chances that Aaron wasted. Two for nine on third down. Is that good? No, that's not good. Really Hold good. on. So time out. So time out. Wait a minute, Skip Bayless. You didn't say that about Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. Well, I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers. I'm talking about here. Tom Brady in the Super Even Bowl. Even he said after you, the game, they were up 10 to nothing early in the second quarter, and they go three and out punt, five plays punt, and then they get thrown for a safety. In, in, well, really? what, do you, what, do you, what do you think what, when they run a run blitz? But you didn't do that with Tom huh, Brady. When he started the game, when he was all those three and out, three mm -hmm. and out, three and outs, you yeah. didn't say anything. You blamed Coach Belichick's defense. Now, all of a sudden. Which Aaron, game? The Super Bowl? The Super Bowl. He threw for 505 yards. Well, That's absurd. He could have thrown he for. put up 33 He could have thrown for 600 yards had he not gone three and out, three and out when they first got mm -hmm. the ball. If but Aaron you, had put up 33 yesterday, we'd be having a different conversation. But he didn't. He had lots of chances, but he didn't. If Tom Brady had put up 42, we'd have a different conversation. Well, so we can do if all we want to. Yeah. If a dog had a square butt, yeah. it would poop blocks. Yeah. It's round, Jenny, so mm. we already know how what happens. But Skip <laughs> Bayless, you need to stop this, this blasphemy my dog with Aaron Rodgers. No, he doesn't. She does. No. Yeah, she does. That is my cue. <laughs> We're moving on. <laughs> Are the Saints on their way to the Super Bowl? Oh, that was mm. tough for me yesterday. And why is Skip upset with Michael Jordan? I'm I need outrage. to hear this. Next. What? No mercy. Well, the Saints, they got some revenge on the Vikings for last year's playoff loss with a big 30-20 win in Minnesota last night. Drew Brees threw for a season low, 120 yards. Elvin Kamara had two total touchdowns, and the Saints' defense stepped up big time. They forced a fumble on Adam Thielen in the second quarter and had a huge pick six on Kirk Cousins. The Saints have won six in a row and host the undefeated Rams on Sunday. Shannon, how far can the Saints go? Uh, I picked them to go to the Super Bowl, so clearly I think they can go True. that far. Um, I think they're the second best team in the NFC. I still have the Rams ahead of them. A lot of get settled uh, next week because these two teams play in in, uh, in New Orleans. Sure. Their defense is better than I thought, especially their front seven. Now, I still think they have some liabilities on the back end. P.J. Williams skip, gave up two touchdowns, had two pass interference calls, but he did get the pick six. Um, but they were real physical. I thought the turning point of this ball game, it looked like uh, the Vikes were about to go up, Skip, at least, what, 10 points? And then Thielen fumbled that ball. Yeah. They go down and get a touchdown. And 
the Saints really never looked back. They could really never get in rhythm uh, after that. And to think that the New Orleans Saints won a ball game. Green Bay Packers are not winning a game in which Aaron Rodgers throws for 120 yards. That's not going to happen. We know that. Um, and so for them to win a game in which Drew threw for 120, he did have the touchdown. First time that the Saints have won a game in which Drew threw for under 150 since 2006. So that's how such an anomaly, what an anomaly this is. Uh, but they're good. Offensively, they can run the ball with Ingram now that he's mm -hmm. back. Kamara can run the ball better than you think for someone his size. He can run inside. He can run outside. He's unbelievable in space catching the ball down the field. Um, and it, Kirk Cousins is going to get a lot of the blame on this pick six. But Stephon Diggs is wrong here. Now, whether you want to call this a shallow cross or a drag, whatever you want to call it, in a situation like this, this is man coverage. He cannot stop. He stops. Yeah. And the, and, 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 and the DB keeps running, and so he hits the DB in the chest. That's on Stephon Diggs. You can't pull up like that. It's just like if I'm running a slant route, Skip, and the quarterback jumps inside and I stop. Well, the quarterback is going one, two, three, and he's throwing the ball. If I stop, he's going to hit the DB right in the chest. That's what happened. Diggs pulls up. He hits P.J. Williams right in the chest. It goes back the other way. Now, if you don't like Kirk Cousins or you're not into the minutia of how you should run around against man or zone coverage, yo, that's Kirk, man. Kirk, I told you, Kirk Cousins. I, I told you he was a underachieving. No, he's a – what's the word? You, how Over, you, overachieving. Oh, he's an over, uh, underconfident overachieving. Uh, oh, yeah, Under underconfident right. overachieving. That's you know, what he is. That's exactly that, what he is. He's also the the highest paid player in the history, most overpaid player in the history of pro football. <laughs> that that, might, that yeah. might be the case, Gil Bayless, but you know how free agency works. Yeah. Free agency is not about being good; it's about being free. Timing. And you have to you have to overpay to get a guy to come to your building. But Skip, I still believe Minnesota is a very good. I mean, Thielen went over a hundred yeah. yards again. Stephon Diggs. They had two receivers. They have two guys that are legit number one receivers. Diggs and Thielen. Kyle Rudolph, he's not the Kyle Rudolph of old, but he still can make plays. But they need to run the ball a little more than what they r ran it. Uh, Dalvin Cook's going to be out for a minute with that hamstring injury. Uh, and we normally see that with guys that have knee injuries. He suffered a knee injury, Skip, you know, that ACL. And so he's struggling mm -hmm. uh, getting that hamstring up to strength so it can carry the – because he's an explosive running back. But they're going to have to run more. But I understand why they throw it. You don't pay a quarterback $28 million, 84 fully guaranteed, Jen, to ask him to turn around and hand it to a running back. So they put a lot on Kirk Cousins' shoulders. And last night, I thought he was playing well. He just got let down in, certain, in, in some situations. Hmm. But, uh, okay, defense, hmm. you're at home. Okay, defense, at any point in time, if your offense is struggling, you're welcome to take the ball away like New Orleans' defense did for sure. them when their offense didn't have it going early on. Okay, Minnesota, any point in time, hmm. if you want to hit Drew Brees and get the ball out, if you want to pull the ball out from one of those receivers, feel free. But don't just settle for that. Just don't settle for the turnover. Do like the 2,000 Ravens or the 0-2 Bucks. Hmm. Turn them into points yourself. Uh-huh. So, I don't know if anybody but me, me noticed this, but Shannon Sharp did pick New Orleans to go to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. I did. And mm -hmm. so did I yeah. before the season started. Mm -hmm. But the last two weeks, Shannon Sharp very quietly has picked against the Saints on the road at Baltimore and at Minnesota. I did. Thank you very much for that. I didn't. <laughs> I picked the Saints both times because these ain't the same old ain'ts. This, this, this team is doing business completely upside down from even last year's Saints. This team is shocking me because it is now the, 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 the home sweet dome team. Uh -huh. Do you realize it's 4-0 and on the road now? 4-0. Yeah. Sure. Beat Atlanta at Atlanta. That'll work. Mm -hmm. Beat the Giants at the Giants. That's business as usual. But, but again, 4-0 and with wins at Baltimore and Minnesota in successive weeks. And look how they did it again yesterday. If you told me that Drew Brees would throw for only 120 yards and have a QBR substandard 47 and they would get outgained 423 to 270, I'd say, uh-oh. You're losing. You're, you're going to get mauled <laughs> at Minnesota. Kirk Cousins, 359, two touchdowns. Minnesota went 7 to 13 on third and fourth down. That's pretty good. First Cousins. But guess what happened once again yesterday? 
Drew Brees threw only 24 passes, and they ran it 29 times. Mm -hmm. At Baltimore, he threw only 30 passes, and they ran it 39 times. That's not exactly Sean Payton football, is it? Nope. Hmm. They have turned it upside down on its head. They're saying whatever it takes to go win a game. Drew, will you swallow your pride? Because Drew Brees likes to fling it, man. Yeah. I think he threw one ball over 20 yards yesterday. Right. Because, he said after the game, we got this elaborate, exotic game plan, and then we go into the game and we see what they're going to give us. And if all they're going to give us is little check downs, we'll take all the check downs. Right. If they're going to let us run it with a light box, we're just going to hammer away and run the football. Right. And they are a different football team that can go win on the road, and I think they could go win in inclement weather on the road, even though we haven't seen that just yet. So the point is that the toughest remaining schedule in all of pro football belongs to the New Orleans Saints. So do I love them? I, I like them. I still like their chances. They, they now got to go to Cincinnati. They got the Eagles, the Falcons. They got to go to Dallas on Thanksgiving, which is not easy. Easy win, there. Yeah. Easy win? I don't yeah. know. It's hard to You'll beat put, Dallas put, on Thanksgiving. Put, two, do, put mm -hmm. two cases on it right now. I got one case on it right now. Okay. And I, I feel real good about that yeah, case. Yeah, you always feeling good about that. Then they that. go to Tampa. That should be easy. But then they got Carolina, two of the last three home and away, mm -hmm. and the Steelers in between. So it's, it's hard, man. Yes. That's a lot of games. But I think they're mentally tough enough to get through this. And once again, you don't get it, but you trust Kirk Cousins too much because he will always let you down in a play or two in a game. And he'll have a big, good QBR, and he'll throw for 359, and he won't convert. And you can say, that was his fault. He looks deer in headlights to me. He looks like he's... He's frantic, like he's going to throw it before he thinks about it because clearly he and Diggs were not on the same page and he threw it very quickly. And, and again, Diggs has already cut the other way. It's like the quarterback has to have the presence of mind mm -mm. to pull it down, yeah. pull it back. Mm -mm. You just can't throw it. No. You cannot no, throw it. But that, that's, You're guessing. You're just guessing. That's the difference between the really good ones and the average quarterbacks because they're throwing on rhythm. They're throwing on timing. That's why the really good quarterbacks get upset when you don't do what you're supposed mm -hmm. to do, Skip. If I tell you to run a speed out, if that's 10 and you got to roll to 12, mm -hmm. and if my back foot hit five, I'm letting the ball go. Mm -hmm. I don't care if the quarterback lines upside. Yeah, you must fight across his face. That's an option route where you have to know the option. You have to have enough rapport with your receiver. Maybe they're too new to have that rapport. Skip it's covered. just like a Julian Edelman option route where you got to you gotta anticipate yeah. it correctly. Yes, yeah, but that you, can't, you don't see Tom Brady throw pick sixes off an option route. But here's the thing with the option route. You're reading man zone, Skip. Mm -hmm. P.J. Williams jumps in his hip pocket. There's no zone to that. But, but he threw it to P.J. Yeah, it was because almost like P.J. was the intended Because receiver. Stephon Diggs stopped. Okay, he just went the other way. He can't do that. Okay, you don't can. get that option. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's just an option route. It's no, just like you guessed no, wrong. No, no, Skip, it wasn't an option. Wrong. Skip, that's a shallow cross. He I, don't, I think it was an option route. No. I do. No, you don't, Skip. First of all, if it was an option route, he's not going to go past the ball. Any option route, no option route is going to take you past the ball. Hmm. So if he's going to run an option, it's going to do. It's going to be between the center and the tackle box. Mm -hmm. He went too far. He went to the other side of the ball, which lets me know that's a shallow cross. Mm -hmm. P.J. Williams, at the snap of the ball, jumps in his hip pocket. That's telling him his man coverage. You do not pull up because if you stop and the quarterback throws it, mm. guess what's going to happen? Mm. He, the dude had reservation for six into <laughs> yeah. the end zone. Uh -huh. All I got to tell you is that pair of receivers for the Vikings makes Kirk Cousins look a lot better than he should look because he throws balls that, that are just crazy balls and they go up and snatch them or come back. And but that's get what them. good receivers do. Okay, th those are the two best at finding the football and changing, you know, repositioning yeah. for the football. Yeah. They're both really, really good at it. And there were four or five throws last night where I said, uh-oh, that's up for grabs. And they, one time, Thielen just went over really? and snatched Yes. It. And Diggs will come back for one. And you say, wow, that, th these guys are really good. But yeah. in that case, he throws it right to P.J., pick six. And you just can't do it in a game of that magnitude, Sunday night football, close game. And all I know is, as a Cowboy fan, I miss Kirk Cousins playing for the Washington Aww. Redskins. Don't I do. Stop. I just do. Yeah. He was one in six against the Cowboys because he always there are always hidden blunders in his QBR. That play, wh whatever, whose ever fault it is, you just have to eliminate it. Is it Diggs' fault or is it just should the quarterback not have tried it at all? Whatever it is, it's it's a typical Kirk Cousins play. 
And then I got to go back to the previous play that was the, the fourth and one play. This is a huge play in the game. They had it fourth and one at their 45. Mike Zimmer says, we're going to go for it. Right. And who does Kirk Cousins choose on the play? He chooses, chooses Laquan Treadwell, who's not trustworthy. He's less trustworthy than Kirk Cousins. Let's give, he's he a first-round pick. I know, I know, but you, he, he's, has he not dropped a lot of balls? Yes, yep. let's give the ball yeah. hit him in his hand. Right? All right, that. so don't choose him. What I'm saying is it's just Kirk Cousins picking the wrong guy. I would never throw him fourth and one and throw that deep of a pass to him. Yeah. This should be a pop pass to somebody for three yards. No, Skip. Yeah. Here's the guy that's a first-round pick. He has one-on-one -on -one coverage. I hit him in the hands, and before he can secure it, the DB give the DB by, credit. By the way, the DB is a first-round pick too. Yeah. Marshawn Lattimore. Yes, but should he not caught this ball? The ball hit him in his hands. It's a huge play because then the Saints go right down. They it's get a easy field goal, and get right? a field goal, and all of a sudden they're off to the races. And then the pick six happens on the next series, and yeah. the game's virtually over. Skip, in a Kirk Cousins in a thing like that when they send eleven guys on the field. The coach feels those are the best 11 guys. Mm -hmm. Nobody can be off limits. Once you start negating, well, we're not going to throw it to this guy because he's not Shannon Sharper. We're not going to throw it to this guy because, no, you're out there for a reason. Mm -hmm. You win. The ball's coming your direction. We mm -hmm. expect you to make a play. It's simple. Skip, the guy's a first-round pick. Mm -hmm. He's not an undrafted free agent. He's a first-round pick. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it, too. Or to Treadwell. Love it. Thank you, Kirk. Way to go. So, here's the bottom line to what's going on between Kirk Cousins and Drew Brees. Kirk Cousins has now thrown 98 more passes this year than Drew Brees. You believe in that? 98. Think about that. It's almost 100 passes more. Yeah. But, his, but his, Skip, Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara mm -hmm. is better than what they okay. have in Minnesota. Okay. I, I got Alvin it. Cook is hurt. You're putting all your eggs in Kirk Cousins' basket, and what's your record? Well, you have what's to. New Orleans right? You pay him twenty. Oh, you pay him twenty-eight million a year. Yeah. yeah, you you put a lot. Of, you put a lot on the so. plate. All right. Twenty-eight million. I want better decision making, Shannon. <sighs> Thank Sorry. you, Jenny. Skip. Well Jenny, said. Jenny, don't I'm worried. Do yeah. Jenny, don't let him do I'm that. I'm worried about him. No mercy. The biggest debate in the NFL is for. The title of best quarterback, Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers, well, Sunday night might uh, help the debate, and the Packers are traveling to Foxborough to play the Patriots, and NBC got none other than Michael Jordan to hype up the matchup. Take a listen to this. A lot of talk going on these days about who is the greatest ever, about who has the titles, the raw talent, the most clutch moments. I get it, it's a tough call. I mean, even the jersey numbers are the same, but maybe the best way to settle this debate is to play it out head to head. I'll watch that. Ooh. I'm sorry I had to watch that. That's Don't do what it, I'm Skip. sorry about. I need to know, Skip, nope. what's your reaction to this? You look upset. For the first time in my life, I am angry with Michael Jeffrey Jordan. For what? I am stunned and disappointed that he would stoop to give credibility and credence to not one debate, but two debates. He opened two wrong doors. He actually put himself in the same cute little sentence with LeBron James, no! who does not even belong in the same <laughs> sentence with Michael Jordan. And then he opened a second door. Aaron Rodgers does not belong in the same breath with Tom Brady. Not what Michael said. Yeah, well, I know, but why would he stoop? to do a commercial, is it for money? Really? Does, does Michael need the money? How could NBC pay him enough with all the money he has to do an ad Made for Sunday Made 350 million football? last year. Okay, so. 1.6 so, billion. So does he need the money? No. no. No, he doesn't need the money. Does he need the attention? Does he need to stay relevant by doing a Sunday night hey, football Michael Jordan, promo? no. No, he doesn't need it. His sneakers will keep him relevant for the rest of his born days and then some, right? right? Correct. So why would he stoop to do this because he opened Open two huge doors. He loves telling the truth. Telling the yeah, truth. Yeah, what he loves Are you telling the truth. Kidding me? If you put him on the lie detector right now, he would laugh out loud at LeBron James being in the same sentence. And he opened the he, door because it's that. a cute ad because they both wear 23 and the other two both wear 12. No, 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 no. So okay. you, no, no, I see what you did, Skip. He was talking about Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, and you took because LeBron tweeted something. That's no, well, you, well, he was going there. That was the the joke of the commercial. That was the little clever, uh, you know, conceit. 
heat of the commercial was he was, oh, are we going to LeBron? No. And then, of course, LeBron, to his credit, jumped right on the bandwagon because Michael opened his door and LeBron ran through it like he should have. That's what happens. Yeah. You open the door, flies come in your house. And now the, that's right. <laughs> and a fly just got in Michael's house. A fly got in. It came right through the door because all the blind witnesses will say, oh, see, Michael's acknowledging that there's a competition between. Oh, there's no competition. Only you. All the, you're right. The competition been over. I oh. thought the competition been over. Did Ma- you see what happened? Well, I have to say it again. Michael is 6-0 and in finals versus LeBron's 3-6. and Michael Jordan won 10 scoring titles to LeBron's 1. Do I need to start no, in again? No, you how far do I need to go? How about, how about you go this far? Tyron, the Cleveland Cavaliers, Jenny, mm-hmm. were in the NBA Finals. They lose one player. They start the season 0-6. They fired the head coach. I know. Now, in 1993, the Chicago Bulls won 57 games and the NBA title. Mm. Michael Jordan retires. They win 55 games, which is two fewer games, and there are Hugh Holland's blown call away from advancing to the Eastern Conference Finals. They lost Kyrie Irving, who was a top, what, 10, top 12, 13 player. They still go to the Finals. Mm-hmm. So with that argument, Skip, babe, I don't really need, think we need to have an argument. Mm. Oh, because I'm, we, I'm just no, getting no, no, started. But... All but, he- but do I do I need to bring up that in as we saw just the other night that in late game clutch free throw shooting LeBron can't s- d- d- make one to save his life or his team's life. Okay, he, he just can't. He, and, he- and even how about right now LeBron without a co-star, without a solo star? I mean, a, a second star. Look, look at what's happened. This team could have only one win so far if not for Lance Stevenson. Lance Stevenson it, saved the night. And without the night. LeBron, they could have no wins. Yeah. Where would they be? With, let me ask you a question. If that's LeBron was still in Cleveland, do you believe Ty Lue would have lost his job? No, a simple but that's yes in or a simple the no. The Eastern Conference. Oh, that doesn't now matter. That, now that you're in the Western Conference, so let's just get this straight real quick on what's happened so far to LeBron here in LA. Let's let's frame this. So the Lakers are down one with eight minutes left at Portland. Close, King. Couldn't close. They're down one with 413 left against the Rockets in the brawl game. Close, King. Couldn't close. Then they're up six with 56 seconds left in overtime against my Spurs on that Saturday night game. Close, King. Or Monday is last Monday night. Close. You, you got to close that. Nope, you couldn't. Then this past Saturday night, they're up one with seven minutes left. 96 to 95 at San Antonio against what's left of my Spurs. Close it, King, and he couldn't close it. They lost again. Oh, whoa, whoa, Without whoa, whoa, Lance whoa, 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 Stevenson whoa, whoa. just going crazy. Whoa, whoa, just a second. With two minutes and 20 seconds, you're down by one. 33 to 32. I mean, you're, 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 you're down one. 33 32. Close, go. Mm. Tom Brady, close the game for us. You're down one. What did he do, Skip Bayless? He, you play. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear about no. He scored this. He, close uh, that game if you were the goal. At that point, he had closed a whole bunch of them because he'd won Does five. Oh, uh, so five. Now, so LeBron had never closed any game. And he closed game. another one that should have stayed closed, except for the luckiest play in whoa, the history whoa. of pro just football. Just so I'm hearing you correctly. Mm-hmm. So LeBron James has never ever closed the game before. Prior to this year, he had never closed the game. How about one that counts? Kyrie closed the one that counted. Uh, how's, well, Kyrie, did. how's Kyrie doing right now? It just doesn't matter. Oh, so that, that, you know what I'm He's doing? coming off surgery. I, I, well, well, Second big surgery on the same knee. You just told me anytime. Is this about Kyrie or You LeBron? told me anytime somebody's on the court and that jersey has your name on the back, they expect you to be great. But, but I don't know how we got off of what Michael originally started talking about, which was Tom Brady and, no, and Aaron Rodgers. He opened the LeBron oh, door. No, 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 no. We, mm-hmm. I don't skip. I want LeBron. Mm-hmm. I was gonna give LeBron a rest today. Mm-hmm. I want to give him. I, I will treat this like the Sabbath. Yeah, I'm gonna give you, him you a want rest. To sweep him under the carpet. No, so no, 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 no. Nobody I, notices what's going on. I, I got another thing. I, I can't point sweep out. 35, 11, and four up under the carpet. But that's not what we're talking about. So mm-hmm. think about this. Tom Brady has won five out of eight Super Bowls. It should be six out of eight. Could and, be. And Aaron Rodgers won one long ago Super Bowl. And since that Super Bowl, Aaron Rodgers is five and six in the postseason. And just during that stretch, Tom Brady is 13 and five in the postseason. And overall, Tom Brady is 27 and 10 to Aaron's 10 and seven. How can you put him in the same breath? It's like insulting to me that we're even having this conversation. And Michael opened the door doing a cutesy ad for NBC. Why? I don't know he gained what what's the win for michael jordan here there's no win because there's no win i'm angry with him for the first time what are you thinking no seriously what are you thinking give me a rationale for this nbc asked him said mike would you mind doing this voiceover for us we have a big game probably the biggest sunday night game that we've ever that we've ever had Mm -hmm. and we're talking about the two best quarterbacks in football playing currently Uh, there's a lot of debate about which is better uh Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers, we and he mentioned 
One guy is very accomplished. One guy he physically gets it. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. Michael Jordan said it. I agree. It. Okay, then. I agree. So now he, he was did saying, it. He said he now. He did it. He says now that there's a lot of conversation that's going to go back and forth over <laughs> the water cooling at the barbershop and on the debate shows. Mm-hmm. He says, but you know only one way to settle this thing. Mm-hmm. He said, they play. Mm-hmm. I'm, that's what. I'm going to watch. So LeBron's like, want to play one-on-one Whoa, now? Skip, skip. I when keep, Michael's like 65? I keep asking you to stop really? bringing LeBron into this equation. Way to go, LeBron. We're talking about Show Aaron, me some guts. We're talking about Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. and we're talking about Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. And I just want you to tell me, why didn't Tom close mm-hmm. when he was a down mm-hmm. one, 32 to 33 in the Super Bowl? I don't want to hear about 505. I don't want to hear about it, the It was left. simply the all-time record for any playoff game. It was simply the most points ever scored by a loser in the Super Bowl, 33 points. The most points wow. ever scored in a finals game in which the player lost was 51. Hmm. But he came to my restaurant, oh, okay. and you didn't make excuses. Hmm. You say you got to close the game. Hmm. So I just want to know why all of a sudden you find hmm. every way possible to make excuses for Tom Brady. I don't care if his defense gave up 7,000 yards. You go get they me 7,001. Hmm. If you're the GOAT, you can do it. How did the genius Bill Belichick's defense give up 41 to the backup quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles? Help me out. Oh. Was it because Malcolm Butler had to watch from the sidelines from the doghouse? That's, I don't know. That, Maybe. Sa- that mm-hmm. same back, that same genius mm-hmm. that told his returner, do not bring the ball out of the end zone mm-hmm. to run useless time off the clock. Mm. The same genius that had his snapper snap the ball over the punter's head mm-hmm. in Denver mm-hmm. and take the safety and end up winning the ball game to get the game, to get the uh, ball back to Tom Brady. Mm. That genius. Mm. See, Skip, sometimes it's the little things that goes unnoticed mm. that leads to the greatness or shows how great a coach is. Mm. See, you think, well, he this is his expertise defense. Well, if they're not the 2,000 Ravens, they can't be good. Well, who's on that de- defense that is 2,000 Ravens or 2,000 Bucks or the 70 Steelers? No one. Mm. The mere fact that he's able to do this mm. should give speaks volume to his greatness. Do you remember what he did to the 90 Buffalo Bills who were ahead of their time with the K-Gun? That game plan is in the Hall of Fame. You know that, Skip Bayless. He was the coordinator, and he still should be a coordinator. Don't do that, Skip That's Bayless. what he did Skip, best. don't do that. Mm-hmm. The man got five Super Bowls. You're talking about he should still be a coordinator. Yeah. Well, he as got- a head coach, he had losing records in five of his first six seasons. And guess who fell out of heaven into his lap? Mike Shanahan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pete Carroll. Mm-hmm. Some guys. Everybody wow. is Interesting. not. Everybody is not as great. The first look at look at uh, 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 Tom Coughlin. Mm-hmm. Tom Coughlin didn't really win anything. Mm-hmm. Tom you know, Coughlin I'm, got I'm the so offended by this. Don't be offended. See, Skip. see, we even saw yesterday. It's classic Aaron Rodgers. He's going to throw a teammate under the bus. It's his fault. He's a blame. That's deflector. not what he's saying. It's not leadership. That's and, not. And what did we see LeBron do at the end of game one of the NBA Finals at Oakland? He just melted down on the bench, and he separated himself from the team. I don't want to associate same, with that mess. The same, right? the same thing yeah. we saw Tom do. Uh-oh. When Tom's yelling Uh-oh. and screaming at teammates mm-hmm. for oh, running yeah. the wrong yeah, route. When he, when, when he Which one? Which when, one? Taekwon Underwood. Taekwon Underwood happened like 10 years ago, and did, he was cut two days later. If you don't mind me asking, did it happen? Oh, it happened at, over on the bench. Oh, he, he, was, he had just happen? joined the team. He Hold ran on. the wrong they route. Kept, they kept T.O. They oh. out of the Hall of Fame for oh, things that please. happened on oh, the please. bench. And then did you see LeBron's already started with his Lakers. Did you see the late timeout in the Laker game on Saturday night? I watch yeah. every no, what did, what did he say? Do what he do? LeBron went over and sat on the scores table when they'd fallen down eight with a minute 30. He goes and sits on the scores table because that's who he is. He's Aaron Rodgers or vice versa. They're the same guy. He sits on the scores table like, I ain't associated with that mess in the huddle. He got you it. You guys tell me what he got it. Do. And he got it down to what? Way to go. We got it down to what? Rondo should have took that layup, but that's not what we're talking about. Skip, Rondo I don't know. should not have taken I don't know what. That first, was a smart play. First, that was a Todd Gurley special yeah, yeah, right yeah. there. That's a smart play mm-hmm. if you got Steph Curry, if you got Klay Thompson, if you got one of these great three-point shooters. Where is that at on the Lakers team? But we're not talking about that. I want you to stop trying to get me off topic. I Michael Jordan said that there needs to uh, there is a debate going on yeah. that needs to be settled. Yeah, he it said will it. be settled on Sunday night. I hope they paid him a billion dollars. Because that's, oh. that's the only reason. Might get it for it. free. 
No. Because he know, he knows he wants the answers just like everybody else does. Stop it. Stop or maybe it. Mike knows Sorry. what I know to be What's true. What's he doing? What's you he know doing? what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he owed somebody a favor at NBC. Don't do that, Skip Bayless. Don't, don't do that. Don't I have no idea. You mad at Michael Jordan? I am. Throwing me time. off. Mm. It was different. Yes. I don't know. Throwing like me it. off. He's open up all these Making debates. Me sick. Oh, oh, but are you also mad at Jason Garrett? Because yes. uh, he's oh been busy in the bye week, and we will tell you why next. No mercy. And the Red Sox are champions again after beating the Dodgers last night here in L.A. Skip, how yep. impressive was your guy, David Price? As a Vanderbilt alum, um, I was so proud of David Price for finally coming up big in a postseason for the Boston Red Sox. So Walker Bueller of Vanderbilt was the best Dodger picker, pitcher, and yet David Price stole the show. Vanderbilt, baseball you. Yeah. What can I tell you? Yeah, Tampa Bay said, where was that when we were in the playoff and in the World Series? But now I digress on that. Skip, when you had, look, this was the best team in baseball, the it Red was. Sox, from start to finish. It was. And when you have the guys that's going to probably finish one and two in the MVP, Mookie Best and J.D. Martinez. And then it seemed like every time, Skip, they come up with a pinch hitter, two guys on, it's like, man, I just hope he can hit, put it in play. He hits the ball over the fence. Every time they needed a timely hit, they got it. Except for Friday night. Yeah, well, they, they went 18 innings. <laughs> but, but come on, Skip. I mean, nobody's surprised. I picked no, the Dodgers. They're just better. Right. It's yeah. simple as that. Yeah. No, well, better. if they did this and they mm, no. you can all you can all look back and say, you know what? There is nothing the Dodgers could have done mm -hmm. that was going to make them better than the Red Sox in this series. Correct. Better team won. Congratulations to the Red Sox. A lot of friends of mine in Boston were happy about that one, but we're going to go back to game three of the World Series on Friday night because look who it is. Jason Garrett sitting in the front row for that game because the Cowboys had a bye. But Garrett has faced some criticism for being there. Former Cowboys coach Jimmy Johnson said on Fox NFL Sunday, quote, I think it sends the wrong message, not only to the fans, but to the players. At three and four, there's work to be done. Mm. Shannon, do you have a problem with Garrett being at the game? No, got none. None? Look, I, I love Jimmy, and he works here with us, but yeah. Jimmy did not work 24 hours a day. And just because, <laughs> who said he didn't get his work done? Listen, from 1996 to 1998, Skip, we won 39 games. We won two Super Bowls. We won two division titles. And our coaches, we would come fly in on a, from a road trip, and the coaches would not even go home. They would stay and break down film. And on bye weeks, we got Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. We had to be back by noon on Monday. I can assure you, now maybe the coaches didn't go to games, but they weren't in there. Mike Shanahan made it abundantly clear. I want you guys to get away. Mm -hmm. Skip. Mm. To say because Jason Garrett has a life that's not breaking down and putting in game plans 24 hours a day, what message? What look? It's the bye week. They make it seem like he's at the game on a Friday night and they play on Sunday. That's not the case. Mm. So, so, in other words, Jason Garrett is supposed to have no life that isn't football-related during football season. Mm. Skip, you and I know that's, that's disingenuous. Mm. That's not true. I know. I've been on teams that won a lot of games, and I know the coaches were spending over 100 hours during a seven-day span. But when it came time to the bye week, they got days off, and whether they went on vacation, they went to Miami, whatever they did. That was their right. That was their mm. business. So to say because, oh, this is, so is this why they they only won three games? Because he's at this game? Look at old Brad Price. Lee was excited, too. Yeah, he should have called me. I'd have been right there. And plus, he was doing his job. What is his job to do, Skip? Clap! Did you see him clapping at the game? He's a good So clapper. he was doing exactly what he was supposed to do. <laughs> he's actually a, he's a gifted clapper. Yes. Yeah. I've never seen anything And like he that. would clap because yeah. with, uh, I think, they, with, no, that was, uh, when they went, won the game, that was 18, that was Saturday, yeah. right? That was Friday. Friday. Right? Friday. Yeah, he clapping. He was at doing his job. I, but Skip, I doubt he, he stayed for all 18 yeah. months. to be wrong. But we, where is he going to go? He ain't had nothing else to do. Hollywood. He's got to go hang with Brad. Uh, he might have been. How we know he hey, wasn't hanging with Jerry? At the hot spot. How we know he wasn't hanging with Jerry? Oh, he might be. Hey, but Skip, stop. We need to stop with this now. I haven't even started with just this. because. It's just, true. So the man not supposed to have a life. You just want my Cowboys to explode and lose, right? You want them to come apart at the seams. How does that hurt? You know what? Jason Garrett should be sitting on a hot seat as a coach, and instead he was sitting in the coolest seat on Friday night yeah. next to Brad Paisley at Dodger Stadium, very near to Hollywood, during their bye week. It sends such a wrong message to, as Jimmy said, the fans and 
even to the players. What are the players doing? They are three and four. This is the time, as you well know, when you, as a coaching staff, self-scout. You go back to those seven game tapes and you tear them all apart just like you're an opposing coach trying to figure out how to beat that I'm offense. Sure they've done that. And you say, let's try this, let's do that, let's yes. turn this upside yes. down, let's go this yes. way. we got a brand new receiver, Amari Carroll, I mean, uh, Cooper, and we got to go out and find out how to get him ingratiated the quickest into That's this offense. That's what you got to offer the coordinator position coach. Okay. That's not the head coach's job. He, he is the offensive coordinator, and that, no, that's what he does hand. best. Well, I'm just saying, this is what he does best, and this is what he should be doing. It's just a bad look. Even if you want to take the night off and take your wife out to dinner in Dallas, I'm fine with that. Well, maybe he maybe, maybe if, Dallas. The, if the World Series had been at Houston, I could make a better case because it's just a short flight. But you went to Hollywood to yeah. watch the Dodgers? Really? Oh, so this man, so this man, hold on. I get it. Yes, you do a lot of self-evaluating and scouting. You do. You see how heavy a formation. You know You know what? Mike would tell us, guys, when we run this toss, we're heavily eye formation, right-handed. So let's run some of this week. When we get in this formation, mm-hmm. 80% of the time, we throw in the Shannon the ball on the mm-hmm. backside option. Okay, I get all of that. Okay. So let me get, so you mean to tell me they couldn't do that on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just, just Thursday? What, what's coming up? The Titans visit the next a week from tonight on Monday Night Football. The Titans are third in points allowed. Is that good? That's pretty good. That's one notch behind the Dallas defense. Is that going to be a low-scoring battle? Yep, it will Probably be. Probably not. So once you need to spend a little more time on the Titans, and then guess what happens the next weekend? You have to go to Philadelphia. Maybe you could get a jump on scouting Philadelphia. I don't know. No, I'm no, just no, saying. No, no. Yeah? Why are you getting the see, jump? You, you just want see, them to lose. You see what you're doing? Now, all of a sudden, you putting everything, you talking about Philly. Why are we worried about Philly when we got the Titans? Why are we worried about Philly? You have a bye week. You can get a jump on it. No, dude. Yeah. You got people to break down tape. Mm. I guarantee you got people out there. That's already, Philly's already been broken down. Philly's already been broken down. The games they played, they already done broke that down. But we're not worried about them because we got the Titans. But in the meantime, they gave me some time off, so I'm taking my time off. Mm-hmm. So let me get this right. You mean to tell me, oh, oh I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> You know, Healy always tell me, he say, Shannon, you know, you got this time off. You got three days off. Yeah, he's telling Chris Healy. Chris Healy, our producer. producer. With yeah. and Charlie Dixon, they say, well, you know what? We're going to give y'all three days off. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So you try to tell me you want me to get ready and still practice debating you even on my time off. Yeah. I wish I might. You know I'm right about that. I wish I might. He doesn't yeah. take a day off. That's him. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to tell you what O'Shea Sharp going to do. Go be out like a scout on a new route. Mm. I'm up out of here. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to be on Fox Lot. You need to stop. Get what is the tagline on our new commercial? Better come prepared, Jason Garrett. You better come prepared for the Titans and then the Eagles. You got time. Are you going to waste it out in Hollywood? It's just a Let bad look. You know what it comes across? What? It comes across like Jason Garrett is now the semi-retired son of Jerry Jones. He's just oh another son. Good. Am I right? How you get that from he, that, Skip? Because he's just uh, resting on his laurels like Jerry does. You don't want the man to enjoy his life. No, I do not want that. That's a bad look. So when you're three and four. If, if you were seven and oh, maybe I'd give it so to you. Even but if, three and so four. I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. Mm-hmm. So if he takes his wife out, that means he's not three and four. Mm-hmm. If he goes somewhere where the public can't see him or cameras can't By catch him. By the way, I, I think she was with him at the game. Yeah, she was. Yeah. Okay. But I'm just trying to say, yeah. so, so how does him going out mm-hmm. change their record at this point? Mm. <sighs> look, it's it's... I was so proud of Jimmy yesterday because Jimmy Johnson took a stand against this because he knew this was the right thing to say. And remember, Jason played for Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Jimmy is fond of Jason both as a backup quarterback and a coach. And I think Jimmy's given a lot of advice to Jason. And, again, Jason probably didn't ask him about this one. This is where you just don't do this now. So so I was going to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. And and when I see Jimmy, I'm going to ask him. So Jimmy on the bye week. You work on Friday, Saturday, mm-hmm. and Sunday. Yep. You work the exact same hours that you worked in a normal week. Jimmy had an expression he used to tell me back in the days I covered his teams, and he would always say, don't work like the mule, work smart. So you work hard in, 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 in a, a certain time frame right. you know, where you just you give it all you got, and then you take a break. Okay. But he's just saying this is a bad look because you're sending the wrong message to your team. How do we know Jason didn't work smart in that time frame? I hope he did. Yeah, I believe he did. three and four, I think you need to stay home. But see – 
You always just keep it, keep it. Brand- Alex Smooth. I want, I want my coach. Yeah. I don't want my coach up and down, Skip. I want him to be calm. Yeah. Like the, like, like, like the calmness of the river. Skip, yeah. you've been to the. I mean, Oklahoma. Y'all don't have anything. Y'all have like rivers, right? Y'all have rivers or lakes, and it's calm out there. Y'all do. We, y'all be saying you just, just calm, you know? No, she's got ten thousand lakes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Well done. But correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. Didn't Belichick go to games during Super Bowl week, and we didn't well, care? That's the, that's because the of his new record. Belichick. Hold on. But that's a difference. We so thought that's, Belichick that's, that's, was. Was, was what? The, so who Belly. criticized it? Besides, that, besides the skipping out. I don't hear no coach. That's what I'm saying, because they were good. This is different. Oh. The records. But that was the new Belichick who looked like he was <laughs> mutinying. He don't was do it. Stop, to, skip. Well, skip, stop. Well, you said that, too. You said this is oh, uncharacteristic. I'll tell you what. The next time we get a break, mm. let me find that you went to Palm Springs. It's let different. me find out you went to Vegas. I don't coach football. No, you I, debate me. And I need you to get your, like you say, you better come prepared. Mm-hmm. I need to get your undivided attention 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even when you're on vacation. I got up at 2 o'clock I don't morning care. so I could get the jump on you, that and I got true. it. No, you and I'm good, and I'll do it tomorrow and the next day and the next day. We go on vacation. And when they tell us we're not going to compete that day, I'll take it off. No, 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 no don't take it off. No, no. You mean to tell me Jason Garrett wasn't competing, and he took a day off? And that's a problem. I know, but it's not like I have the Titans and the Eagles to get ready for. You it's, got it's, me. It's, it's just you. I'm a more it's form- just you. Oh, good thing I'm you woke up I'm a more formidable opponent than both of those guys <laughs> putting the team putting together. No, I got this. Shannon, he does wake up earlier than both yeah. of us, I think. Yeah, I don't think I we're ever going to win there. All right, wasn't a bad look for Aaron <laughs> Rodgers to go after Ty Montgomery yesterday. We'll discuss that with Greg Jennings next. No mercy. Well, Ty Montgomery cost the Packers a chance to win yesterday. Aaron Rodgers was reportedly very upset with Montgomery's decision to return a kickoff. We're joined by Fox NFL analyst Greg Jennings. All right, Greg, Mm. should Rodgers be that upset with Montgomery? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. (laughs) No doubt about it. I'm going to tell you right now, I was upset. (laughs) Like, as a fan, I felt like we all got robbed. Got robbed! From an opportunity to just witness what could have potentially took place. Or we, maybe what wouldn't have taken place. Or what wouldn't have. Exactly. Well, we never had an opportunity to see. We did. Either way, we would have found out what could have, what mm-hmm. didn't, mm-hmm. what would have, yep. whatever the case may be, but we never got that opportunity, and I think it was snatched away. But as far as Ty Montgomery goes, very smart player. I was, I was very shocked that he even decided to take it out, but I, I put it on Ty Montgomery as well as coaching. Huh. Because in that situation, you have you must be clear and concise when it comes to what we are doing. I truly believe that if they had told Ty Montgomery, we are not bringing it out, he would not have brought that ball out of the end zone. But when you give a player the option... <laughs> Or you say, make a great judgment, which he has always done. A very smart player, very sure-handed, doesn't put the ball on the ground. Mm -mm. And and, in that situation, he's two, not even two two full yards deep in the end zone. So in kick return rules, if you're not three yards or deeper, Mm -hmm. you you can bring it out. It's up to your discretion. He felt like, again, this is an opportunity for me to make a play. I can make hero, a play. Hero ball. And so, but because I know the type of player Ty Montgomery is, I'm not holding this against him for the remainder of the season, obviously. But if I'm on the sideline and he's my teammate at that moment, oh, I'm hot. I am disturbed. I'm like, come on, man. You got you to gotta kneel because two minutes and five seconds left. You got a free timeout because of two-minute warning. You have a timeout in your back pocket. Mm-hmm. You got Aaron Rodgers. Your offense has opened up. You're running the ball well. The def- you have their defense on their toes. Everything is in your favor. And we've seen Aaron Rodgers perform mm-hmm. at a high level in this situation with much less time to work with. Mm. Obviously, Give me a chance. You played for the Packers, you <clears throat> caught balls from Aaron Rodgers, but you did not cross over with Ty Montgomery. But you've heard from other players what he's like as a teammate. Yeah, he's a great teammate. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers loves him. Mm. He loves him. One of the smartest guys. I mean, this this was so uncharacteristic. That's why I was I was almost like, what are you doing? Because it just didn't, it doesn't fit Ty Montgomery. And in smart football in that situation. And, again, that's why I can, I can – he shares the blame with coaching staff because I think if you're clear and just concise – and Mike McCarthy said in his press conference, the, I, the, the idea was to put the ball in Aaron Rodgers' hands. 
to to keep the ball in the end zone, mm-hmm. like not to bring it out. But he never said it with do we, conviction. Do you realize that? Do you realize that? Exactly. Yeah. He, he said it. That was the idea. But he never said we told Ty Montgomery or we said we didn't want to return the ball. Let's get it on the 25-yard line, put mm-hmm. the ball in air. If they had said that, I don't think we're even talking about this. Okay. In some situations, you shouldn't have to say it. Mm-hmm. You're right. The, the really great players are supposed to know down and distance. They're supposed to know circumstances. <laughs> Hold on. Look who we got. We got Aaron Rodgers. That's not, that's not Sam Darnold. That's not Josh Ooh, Rosen. Shot. That's Sam Darnold. That's Woo. not Dak Prescott. Woo, that's New not, player. That's definitely not oh, Dak Prescott. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you got no chance. You already know. You already know you ain't got no chance when that's going to happen. It's not Kirk Cousins. We'll, we'll do, do that again. We, that see, too. Why yeah. you got to take a shot at first cousin? Because you took a shot at Dak. Thank I, you. I mean, he's balling. No, but was he, though? The fact of the matter is, <laughs> Greg, I agree 100%. Not only should Aaron Rodgers be mad, this whole teammate should his whole team should be mad at him because he did he denied us of an opportunity to see if Aaron Rodgers could fail or succeed and in that situation what do you hope to happen because if you bring the ball out now you're going to be on the underside of the 2 minute warning so you've taken the time out from your team at least if you kneel it down Aaron Rodgers is going to get a play True. and True. he's going to get the 2 True. minute warning and he still has a timeout so every blade of grass is in play. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. We, we can't throw this ball in the middle of the field because of time. You got plenty of time. 147. You do. Aaron Rodgers probably could go up and down the field twice. You got if Mason I, Crossbar, too. See, there you he go, can see. make it from oh. 56. There you go. See, what? this is not about Mason Crossbar. Well, it was about this, to be. This, yeah. Who said that? Huh? Knowing did. Aaron Rodgers like I know him, he's going to put the ball in the end zone. Oh. That, 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 the Aaron Rodgers I know. Oh, okay. Maybe you're talking about a different Aaron Rodgers. But, let me say, but that's what I'm saying. Uh, what he did was he robbed us. And Skip, you know, look, I get it. Sometimes when you're in a situation, you're in the heat of the moment, you don't always think clearly. And you get caught up. You're like, okay, I've been bringing them out. I've been bringing them out. I've been bringing them out. And you lose at this point. Man, we're only down two. This is the fourth quarter. we like 205 left. The first quarter, running a kickoff back. Fourth quarter, under two minutes, we're down two. is something mm-hmm. entirely different. So you have to always constantly conscious, mm-hmm. constantly be on your toes. Mm-hmm. And what the really, really great ones can do mm-hmm. is that when the situations become even more stressful, they can slow it down and still see things that clearly. Is correct. You know, okay. it's like your boy, like me, Skip Bailey, you know, I was like, before it was an even cool thing, I never took this, but they say I was like on Adderall because I saw everything so clearly. Were you? Yeah, no. no. And everything, <laughs> just, everything just slowed down. I just like, yeah. I can see people coming. Oh, yeah, this is what I need to do. Huh. Skip, there was a situation where we were playing Kansas City in 1993. They didn't have any more timeout. Now, John threw a ball, and, you know, I, I cooked him that day, Greg. Greg, I had ten. <laughs> Greg, you know I had 10 for 60 and three tubs. <laughs> but anyway, no, no, what are we Never doing? No. But I'm just going to show you the situation. They had no timeout, Skip. Okay. And John threw me a ball. It was like four yards behind the line of scrimmage. I would have had more yards, but he... <laughs> I, I, caught, I caught the ball mm-hmm. for the simple fact I okay. know they didn't have any time out. Right. If this ball is incomplete, now that's going to stop the clock and going to give them an extra 30 seconds. I want to eat all that time okay. up. Got but it. you got to know that. I skill. agree. You have high IQ. I give you that. Football and – Yeah, you yeah. Do. No, you do. Uh, something coming. So, <laughs> no, nothing's coming. I'm going back to what Michael Silver wrote for – NFL.com, and he said that Ty Montgomery was furious about the previous series, and he only played six offensive plays the whole day because he's sort of a combo back, you know, right. runner receiver type. But in on his sixth play of the of the whole game, he was in on first and ten from the 21 yard line on the previous possession, and Aaron threw him a little pass to the side. If we could please see that, and Aaron had a rusher right up in his face, and he threw low and outside. If yes. we could please see that play, here it is. He just throws it low and outside, and there's no way, I don't know, maybe Ty could have dived and caught it. It's highly doubtful. And what happened at that moment? In came they took him Aaron out. Jones. They yanked him right out of the mm-hmm. game, and according to Michael Silver, one of the teammates said anonymously that he was furious and that he threw his helmet down on the sideline. And it's possible there was a little bit of rebellion going on there, a little bit of mutiny, like, okay, if you're going to do that to me, I'll do this back to you. And I'm not saying he's trying to sabotage. He's just saying, okay, if it's my turn, it's my turn. And I'm just going to return this ball. <clears throat> and this is where I d- uh, disagree with the idea that it was two yards deep. If we could see the return again, 
he gets a little head start, and he actually catches the ball right on the goal line, if we could see it. If you, like he gets a it's little. like a yard and a okay, half. Here he goes. He's oh. running forward, but he, but he caught it. The ball's going to drop just barely over the goal line. But see, his and, intention all along was to okay, run that ball out of the end zone I, because you see I it. I do agree with you, but any special teams coach would advise on that kick to yes. return it. That's a returnable kick under any other circumstance except Ex- for this. Exactly. Yes. 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 So it's not like it went five yards mm-hmm. deep and he had he had to look around and say, oh, I'm thinking, like from a dead right. start, you know, like he had to s- go with it. Right. Nope, that's not what happened. He got a little running start and he took it at the goal line and he thought he could make a play. He's been kind of a playmaker in a little big ways for them over time. He's made little big plays against my Cowboys two or three mm-hmm. times in games back in 2016. He's not a bad player, but he's lost his spot in the rotation to a bunch of backs, mm-hmm. starting with Aaron Jones. So is he a, you know, just an unhappy camper? Yep, he probably is. Um, did, did he just say, I'm going to do this my way? Pro- probably, probably he did. Was he told flat out, don't run it out of the end zone? Probably Take not. a knee. I don't think he was, he was told to take no. a knee. But I agree with you. I wanted to see. I was just deflated. It just exactly. Left, the whole game just fell flat at that point because it virtually ended with his decision. And then I, I got to give um, Ramik Wilson, who I didn't know. He's a fourth-round pick out of Georgia. Yeah. He just flat out took the yeah. ball out of his hand. Oh, he, he, oh, he took caught, it away. He just took it out of his but hand. But if you look at the shot, Skip, yeah. he caught him. He didn't see him. Yeah. He came in from the side. Really? So he caught him flush. He was dazed to begin with. Yeah. And it's not good enough. These guys, what they do not skip, they teach you not just get the tackle, get the ball out. He tackled the football <laughs> and, and literally just wrenches it out of his hand and falls down with it on the ground. He got, got hit. Game over. He got, he got the air hole shot, Greg. Yeah, but to, <laughs> again, to your point, though, it, it's not that Aaron Rodgers was overreacting or this, his teammates were overreacting. As fans watching the game. Robbed us. Exactly. We felt robbed. And again, it, this, this is beyond Ty Montgomery because he's a great guy, great teammate, all those things. But come on, man. You got to know the situation. Any other situation, as you alluded to, you bring that ball mm-hmm. out 100 times. Mm-hmm. 100 out of 100. You do. But two minutes left in the game. Yep. With that quarterback. With the way Down our two. offense is rolling and the way that defense was playing. Okay, if he'd run it to the 40, would you give him a pass? Exa- and, and I was going to say right. that. Had he not even fumbled, mm-hmm. we're still fine with okay. it. Okay. Because at least you lost have a chance. Your, your two minute you, right. timeout. Yes, you, 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 lost the, you lost the free time. What, what you're concerned with is that you run time off the clock. Yep. Time is of the essence. So you want to save as much as you can. So if, if, even if he runs it to the 40, Skip, mm-hmm. he's going to be so if he gets it to the 40, what's it going to be? 148, 140? We want time. We don't – field position is under – when I'm dealing with Aaron Rodgers, I don't care about field position. Mm. As a matter of fact, you can start me in the stands if you like mm. because I have the utmost confidence that he's mm. going to deliver us. Mm. Robbed us. Malachi mm. – you know Malachi 3, 8 through 18? <laughs> you remember what he used to ask? Mm-hmm. They asked a question, said, will a man rob God? He answers himself. Mm. He said yes and tied that his offering. Mm. He robbed us <laughs> of Aaron <laughs> Rodgers do with because he robbed us oh. – of seeing Aaron Rodgers in his ultimate greatness mm. before that Sunday matchup. You remember Michael Jordan had the commercial. Say somebody <laughs> don't go think to he's de- forgotten. Somebody's going to decide who the goat is. <laughs> mm. I'm sure he's that. That's one of my favorite that. sermons. Give up uh, the pastor, Reverend Moses mm. Carter. He used to ask him mm. that every Sunday. Will a man rob God? He said he answers himself because he already knows. Yes. He just say when? In time and all. He said, bring him to the storehouse. And the man to open up the windows of heaven and blow you out, pour you out a blessing. Really? Bring That's what he said. Y- y'all better leave. Come on now. <laughs> y'all, y'all keep on thinking. Come on now, let me, let me, let me I'm give, a Baptist. <laughs> let me drop. Mm. <laughs> you know, you I, drop some dollars. You know, on skill, <laughs> baby. I, I prefer Proverbs 23:9. Don't what do you speak say? within the hearing of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom I'll of you your words. You go. Despise <laughs> the wisdom of your words. Think impressive. about that. Whoa. Always ready. I, I yes, give you my wisdom. You ain't got no wisdom. You yeah, talking about you would have you working on you working on your vacation. <laughs> you don't want Jason the Gary to have a even a look like one mm-hmm. like a day off. Yep. Keep hey, working, look, Jason. There, there, there's another one in Proverbs that there's a way, there's a way that, that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. <laughs> 
It was a way that Ty Montgomery <laughs> thought it was. That's true. He thought that way was right. Well, but you, you it, know, Greg, this is this is a fireball offense. Is, his way might be this the is a way this today. is a waverable no, offense. No, this is a <laughs> waverable so? offense. <laughs> Absolutely oh, not. I'm so impressed by all of you guys no. uh, with okay. the verses. Greg, you know. Greg, thank you. you know. <laughs> thank you for joining us. All right, the Redskins are they now the team to beat in the NFC East? Uh, we'll discuss that. Next. Walk it, too. No mercy. All right, the Redskins are still in first place in the NFC East after a huge day from Adrian Peterson. He had just under 150 rushing yards and a touchdown in a win over the Giants. They're ahead of the Eagles, who moved to 4-4 four four with a win over the Jags in London. And the Cowboys, as we know, had their bye this week and are in third place at 3-4. and four. Shannon, who is the best team in the NFC East right now? Now. I still believe it's the Eagles because they have the still. best quarterback. Hmm. And you look at his numbers, oh, walk it to him. He was on the full display yesterday. You was saw he? Yeah. I saw a lot of things. You, you, you saw that win. Hmm. Did you see that? Hmm. Did you see these My 13? team beat that team 40 to 7. Go ahead. So how many extra wins did hmm. they get for that? Hmm. Did, was it one? No. <laughs> okay. That's what all of you know. Thir 13 touchdowns, two interceptions, and he missed the first two games. But they're going to have to do it a little differently than what they did it last year. Last year, they got Jay Ajahi at the trade deadline. They had the Winnebago, LeGarrette Blunt. Mm -hmm. They do not have Jay Ajahi uh, uh, towards ACL. Blunt's in uh, Detroit. So, Skip, they don't have those bruisers. Hand it to them, move the pile, get us four or five yards. Smallwood is a, is a smaller back. He's better at catching the ball out of the backfield. Clement, mm -hmm. although he's sturdier, he's a smallish back. He's, I shouldn't say smallish, but he's short in stature. Mm -hmm. He's about 5'8", goes about 220. Mm -hmm. uh, Sproles, um, I think it's over for him, Skip Bayless. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's not the same guy yep. anymore. So they're going to have to do it a little differently than what they did in the year, uh, last year. Mm -hmm. But as long as you got that guy, Carson Wentz, as long as you got the quarterback, you have a chance. Now, Adrian Peterson, Skip, I didn't know – I did not believe – Going into the situation, he could get the carries. He would need to be successful because they talk about where well, they got Chris Jones and they had and they had uh, uh, Samaj P. Ryan. Mm -hmm. So you, you, they're naming all these guys that they had. And I was like, well, Adrian Peterson is not going to show you what he can do in ten carries mm. because yesterday, you know, he had this big long run, mm -hmm. which put him at because up until that point, Skip, he had really done nothing, and then at his age, can he take 20, 25, know. 30 carries for a prolonged period of time? Thus far, he's proven me wrong. Mm -hmm. He's looked better than I thought he would, but I didn't think he could get the carries. Um, Dallas, I think they're the third best team, and I don't even really know why we even need to talk about the oh. Giants, Skip Bayless. Oh. Uh, oh, I thought you were talking about the Cowboys. No, no, no. Uh, Saquon Barkley, Skip, people are like, Saquon doesn't do anything. Saquon Barkley has 100 yards every game. That's just getting back to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> So they should count those yards. Because if they count those yards, he'd be well over, like, 150. Because his offensive line is trash, Skip. You know that. I know that. You watched it. I've watched it long enough. That offensive line is terrible. Mm -hmm. And they got Eli Gunshot, and they need to move on. They know what Eli is. They know what he isn't. So it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. So basically, this is a three-horse race mm -hmm. between the Cowboys, the Eagles, and Washington. And I believe when the dust settles, when the smoke clears and whatever mm -hmm. analogy you want to say, when it pay, when the rubber meets the road, mm -hmm. the cream rises to the top, whatever analogy you want to leave, use, mm -hmm. when it's all said and done, walk it to them and mm -hmm. the Eagles will be division champs. Hmm. Interesting note about walk it to them, Wentz, or is his name Carson Wentz, or is it W-I-N-C-E, Wentz, as in... Why are you wincing? Do, do you realize that in his two and a half odd seasons in the National Football League, He's fumbled 30 times. That leads that, that, the that, National that, That's a little concerning. Rate. That's a little oh, concerning. 30 fumbles? That's a little concerning, Skip. And he lost another one yesterday against those Jaguars or what's left of the Jaguars. Yeah. And they sort of hung on. What was it, 24 to 18? Ah. Not too impressive. <laughs> you actually thought Blake Bortles was going to break him back. Blake Bortles played okay yesterday. I'm not a big fan. Did you see that fourth down throw? Yeah, I I, I saw it. But they kind of hung in there. And all of a sudden, they, at the end, they got a far-fetched chance to win the game. I think you were a little nervous about that game. No, but not long they got Blake Bortles. Now, if they had Mark Brunel, he ought to be nervous. Yeah, that's true. Because he did you in one time at Man, your place. You, why you got to bring up old stuff? We you, not that's even... why you were talking about it. That's why you brought it up. So, I'm going to hang in with Dallas, give them a slight edge, because they just turned on the AC. Because it was getting hot in Dallas, and they turned on the AC. Oh, Amari Cooper. Uh, Amari Cooper is there. And Amari Cooper is a stud. And I think he will turn back into Amari Cooper for the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. The coach, I can take or leave, but 
Again, maybe they're going to win in spite of their Hollywood coach. He was just coach of the yeah. year two years yeah. ago. He was. Yeah. And you already ready to dispose of him. <sighs> I've pretty much seen enough, but maybe this year will save him. I'm hoping so because I still think they are positioned to take off right now and go win this division because the Eagles have by far the hardest remaining schedule. The Eagles got some hard games left here. All of them hard. This is the NFL. They got to go to the Saints. They got to go to the Rams. They still haven't played Washington. They got them twice. That's Dallas twice. Dallas twice, yeah. Woo. That's 4-0 and right there. Woo. That's 4-0 and right there. Okay, well, you better hope so. I know so. You know what you better hope? That Howie Roseman, the GM of your Philadelphia Eagles, who has dominated the NFL the last two years, you better hope he comes up big at the trade deadline. Oh, Howie T. Oh. Tomorrow oh, afternoon. Oh, Howie T. Howie right? T going to pull it off? Howie T. What's the other guy's name? Oh, Dougie P. Dougie P. And Howie. Okay, yeah, I got it. Well, watch we get Pat Peterson. Well, if you get Patrick Peterson, all bets are off. I will give you the nod. Well, hold on. We keep talking about Amari Cooper. There's a reason why a guy in his fourth year the fourth pick in the draft is on the second team, Skip Bayless. Mm-hmm. The inconsistency. Are we sure those inconsistencies and drops won't rear its head in Dallas? Maybe so. But the same coach that you're we're talking about here, John Gruden, he gave away you, the guy you call the best defensive player in pro football. He was one of the best. Okay, so maybe he gave away the best receiver in pro well, football. Well, I, mean, I guess he, he needs guys that's going to run spider Y2 banana. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. amazing how good that sounds on television when Sounds's you actually good. got to call that in a game and yeah. it doesn't work. It doesn't work. When, when you hadn't called plays in 10 years, Skip yeah. Bayless. Mm. But I told you this was going to happen. Mm. I foretold of this. Oh, Sharp Adamas. Yeah. Oh, man. What did you foretell? I foretold him that John Gruden times had passed him by. Mm. We'll see about that when he's got all five first-round picks in the next two years. It doesn't skip. What good is money if you don't know Mm. what to buy with it? So (laughs) What good is that? I got to tell you, as a Dallas Cowboy fan, lifelong, I am much more fearful of the Redskins than I am of the Eagles because the Redskins are legit. Hmm. I thought the Redskins, after a physical, emotional rivalry battle with the Dallas Cowboys the week before, I thought they might just go up to the Giants and stink it up yesterday, and they did not. Now, I know that's mostly on the Giants because they're just... The Giants are terrible, Skip. Eli's just pathetic, but as I tweeted yesterday, we knew that two years ago, and he's still pathetic. But the point is... Washington is really impressing me because they're seventh in points allowed, so their defense is legit. Yeah. And I'm with you. Adrian Peterson keeps proving me wrong. Now, we're only about halfway or so, right. and will he start to hit that, that old running back wall? He might, but he was really big yesterday. He got stripped one time and got the Giants back in the game briefly, but – I got to tell you, Alex Smith is just flat out better than Kirk Cousins. He's not. He just is. He's not. He, he's much better for them because you can trust him. He's a professional quarterback. He's not going to throw for 400 yards, but he'll throw for 200-something, and he'll beat you. If you don't mind me asking, did, did, did uh, uh, Cousins have an Adrian Peterson last year? Was Josh Reed there mm-hmm. last year? Was the offensive line intact like it was this year, last year? But he's Kirk Cousins. He's a $28 million quarterback. You got to pull it off, man. Hold on. He was 1-6 and did, six against the Cowboys. Why didn't Shake down pull do, it do off? You, do you realize Kirk Cousins was 0-4 against Dak Prescott? You keep talking and now about, Alex Smith is 1-0 and as a Redskin against Dak Prescott. You keep talking about check down. Do, do you know check down had 26 total touchdowns in 15 games? Mm-hmm. And a guy in that same offense has 26 in eight games? What's the record? Five and two. Seven and one. Mm. But, okay, well, help me out with this here. Why, why, why does it always seem mm-hmm. the team that check down Alex Smith leaves gets better after he leaves? Mm-hmm. Look at San Francisco. What did they do when he got up became, when he wasn't the start anymore? Mm-hmm. Cap took him to the Super Bowl. He was really good. He was better than Alex Smith. What happened when Pat Mahomes became the starter in Kansas City? It's been good. Mm-hmm. You notice that? that there's a reoccurring theme. Was Common Kansas- denominator, Kirk Cousins, I mean, uh, uh, Alex leaving and team getting better once he leaves. Were the 49ers pretty good before the big switch to Colin Kaepernick? Yeah. yeah they were pretty good. But pretty good ain't doing it. We, now, yeah. Jim Harbaugh said, I think we got a Super Bowl caliber team. Mm-hmm. We just need to make – that was the only move they made. Mm-hmm. Andy Reid says, you know what? Andy Reid traded up. He moved heaven and earth and threw in a boat mm-hmm. to get – uh, Pat Mahomes, mm. Patrick Mahomes. Mm. Why did he do that if check down Alex Smith is the guy? Mm. Why do they keep doing this? They took Cap in the second round, too. 
So why do they keep taking these quarterbacks early, Jen, if he's the guy? So you keep calling Harbaugh khaki pants, yet he made the move of the century to, at midstream, say, I'm going to go with Colin Kaepernick. I call him that khaki pants because he had Michigan. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, he, and you somehow, in your brain, keeps thinking that he's better than St. Nick. And he ain't. We'll see. What are we going to see? Pretty soon. Urban, I got something to say about this. Mm-hmm. Urban going to do what he does, what he always does to him. Mm-hmm. Okay, you feeling good now. They beat Michigan State, and he won't let it go. He say they're Bush League. Oh, they do it. They holding hands. I get all that. But old St. Nick said, mm-hmm. hey, and we got the Heisman Trophy. Mm-hmm. Oh, TT? Oh, Tua Tagovailoa? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 Tua Tagovailoa. Did you see Kyler? Kyler Murray. Oof. Hold on. Woo. How many touchdowns does Kyler have? It ain't over yet, man. We got 25 and 0. Mm. Can you get better than that, Jenny? Can you get better than tw- no interception? Mm. 25. Can he play? I just want to see if he can play. I, I don't know. Mm. They sent him to the locker room in the fourth quarter. Mm. He eating hot dogs, popcorn in the fourth quarter. Throwing six passes in the second half with seven, eight weeks into their season. Mm. Six passes, Skip Bayless. Let that sink in for a second. Mm. Have they played anybody? No, no, they skip Bayless. They have. All I know, they, they got, they're not even going to play anybody this Saturday. They got LSU. Yeah, big. Where deal. is LSU ranked? I don't know. Where is LSU? No, don't, don't do this. They Skip lost Bayless. to Florida. Where is LSU ranked? How do we get on this? Hold on. I don't. I we're the talking about They lost. Okay, LSU lost to Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Who lost to Georgia? Mm-hmm. Who LSU blew the doors off? Mm. Yeah. So we gonna get a chance to blow the doors off all of them because mm. we got LSU on Saturday. Mm. They're fourth. And we're going to do them. We got Auburn coming down the pipeline. Mm-hmm. Somebody got to see us in Georgia, at Atlanta. Mm. You know, the devil went down to Georgia. He's mm-hmm. looking for a soul to steal. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Skip, you know Charlie Daniel, right? I do. I don't like it, but, mm. you know, hey. I don't like it either. But the point is, Jack hanging it, in. As long as Howie Roseman doesn't pull off a deadline deal, you know I got T. this. You know Howie T going to make something happen? Mm, he probably will. Of course Hanging he in. is. Mm, that's what he does. I see the man. Mm. Didn't he pull it off? Yeah, I saw him get butter from a duck. Mm. Butter from a duck. Yeah, oh, Howie T, he magic like I've that. I've heard that one before. Get water from a brick, Skip. You seen him do it? <laughs> I seen him ring a brick and get water up out of it. Mm. Fortunately, something Just I have day. heard before, uh, the fact that the Browns are on a losing mm. streak. So is Skip losing faith in Baker Mayfield? What? I, I got to know what you have to say. Mm. Next. You like Baker, too. No mercy. Hugh Jackson said last week that he would play a bigger role in the play calling, but it did not help yesterday. Cleveland is now on a three-game losing streak after losing 33-18 to the Steelers. Baker Mayfield threw two touchdown passes and an interception in the loss. Shannon, Mm -hmm. how much is Baker to blame? Well, I think he gets uh, uh, a large portion of the blame, just like he got a large portion of the credit. When he came in at the half and they turned it around against the Jets and then they won another game. I think they ended up beating Baltimore. Everybody, Skip, had pom-poms on. He was kicking up, had a big old sign saying, yay, raw. So he (laughs) got a lot of the credit. So he deserves a lot of the blame. Here's the thing. Since he's been the starter, they have 11 takeaways, tied for most in the NFL. But they only have 21 points off those turnovers. So in other words, he's getting opportunity even when he doesn't have the – even when – the team scores, even when they give him extra possessions. Hmm. He's not doing anything with those possessions. Uh, now, I know Skip, you know, probably had Sean Lee not tweaked his hamstring, mm. they'd be better. Had yeah. Hugh Jackson started him at opening day, they'd probably have a better record. That's neither here nor there. At the end of the day, we are where we are. He deserves some of the blame. Mm-hmm. Did, you see that? Did you see that performance yesterday, Skip Bayless? Mm-hmm. What am I supposed to do with that? Huh? You, are you proud of that? You, you told My me. My turn? No, it's not your turn yet. You keep telling me, oh, Jenny. Jenny, you, you saw him a lot last year. Oh, he threw 43 touchdowns, six interceptions. That's Jim, pretty good, 43 good. to six. <laughs> I'm looking at him right now. He eight and six. I know. Mm. Uh, what, 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 he need to go on a hot streak. He need to throw He need to throw 35 touchdowns without throwing another pick over the next eight games. Eight game. Do you see that happening, Skip Bayless? Mm. Because I do not. Mm. And I got some good old glasses. I got some good old strong medicine. You like the mm-hmm. glasses, Skip? I just mm-hmm. got these the other day. Mm. But anyway, Skip Bayless, 58% <laughs> of his play. You told me he was accurate. Had the highest QBR. This yeah, joke, for the last two years. In this joker completing 58%. Now, with the way the rules are set up now, if a quarterback completes under 60% of his passes, he's not very good. Hmm. He's not very good, Skip Bayless. So, ooh, he, oh, oh, the four rookie quarter. 
I mean, yo, Steve, he dug deep for this one. Mm. He, he stayed up late. He did what Jason Garrett, you wanted Jason Garrett to do. He stayed up late, stayed up late. Steve Owens, you're Yeah, researcher. Steve, yeah. He, he writes all your stuff. No, nah, he's, he's as good as they come in the research every department. Every opinion. Don't yep. get skip. Skip Steve a lot of love skip. That's, a, that's skip. unnecessary, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> that's really unnecessary. But anyway, of the four rookie quarterbacks, did you know he's the only one that's completed less than 60% of his pass? Mm. Really? Of all the quarter, all the rookies. Rosen and Donald and Allen, Baker Mayfield. Who do you want right now, those no, rookies? No, no, no. Who do you want? Who do you want, Shannon? You're on the hot seat. Whoa, Pick one. Whoa, we'll skip Baker. Pick one and stick with it. You just blasted Sam Darnold about two <laughs> topics ago. <laughs> Who do you like? I'm, it's I'll take time. Baker Mayfield. Okay. I'm sticking with I'm it. I'm going to let you take it mm -hmm. as soon as I finish. Mm -hmm. So 6.6 .6 yards per attempt. Mm -hmm. That's the fourth worst in the NFL. So, in other words, not only is he not pushing the ball down the field like Skip told me he could mm -hmm. do, not only is he a careful gamble, gambler like Skip, that's oxymoronic because mm -hmm. gambling in and of itself is taking, taking risks. But anyway, Skip, the guy is completing less than 60%, mm -hmm. and all he's doing is checking the ball down. Mm. And I'm supposed to give him, and, and who the blame supposed to be on? Mm. Now, I know you is going to get a, 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 a lot of the blame. Because he's been there for three years, and it doesn't seem like this thing's going to turn around. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much longer or how much faith mm -hmm. Jimmy Haslam and that the front office is going to have in you. Mm -hmm. But Baker Mayfield deserves the lion's share of the blame mm -hmm. because he gets lion's share of the credit mm -hmm. when things go well. Mm -hmm. So, the yeah. Baker Mayfield I saw at Oakland, did he win the game? Yeah, he won the game and got robbed No, 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 Skip. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Baker bounced right back and beat Baltimore at home in overtime, mm -hmm. throwing to one Derek Willies, who then quickly got hurt and is lost for the season. And he was also throwing early in that game to Richard Higgins, who was his favorite receiver and a guy who hung out with. And he's gone for the season. And do you hear Tom Brady raving about Josh Gordon now? That's all I read about is, boy, Tom Brady loves him some Josh okay. Gordon. Is, didn't he used to be with the Cleveland Browns? Yes. So could he be Derek – I mean, could he be um, Baker Mayfield's favorite target by now? Yeah, I think but, he could but, be. But skill. Okay, he's gone. So that's three receivers who are gone. Can you name the left tackle protecting Baker Mayfield's blind side for me? No. Nope, you can't because his name is Desmond Harrison. He's out of West Georgia, undrafted. Oh, West Georgia, that's in, in the crib. I know, yeah, it's in the crib. West Georgia, undrafted, and Baker felt like he was in the crib because he was just getting rocked in his crib because it was full of Steelers yesterday. What? Every time I looked up, he would plant and, and he would get hit thought, by from both I, sides. I thought he was elusive. Yeah. Remember, he had great pocket press. By yeah, the way, Jim was yeah. telling me that. Thank you, thank you. Still. Could we see a play at the end of the first quarter? This is pure vintage. Baker Mayfield, could we see his escape artistry on a play that happened right at the end of the first quarter yeah, when it was still a football game? Watch this. Tell me this isn't escapism. Whoops, whoops. That's a little Johnny Manziel going on. And then 30 yards to Jarvis Landry for a big completion that set up a missed field goal that would have had him right. Whoa, in the game. whoa, whoa. I know yeah. we're not talking Ooh. about no missed field Ooh. goals. Hold on. Ooh. I know we're not talking about missed field goals with a missed field goal against the game, opening game against Pittsburgh Steelers that would have won. Or Ooh. two missed field goals and two missed Look PATs Boy, against New Orleans that time. would have kept Tyrod Taylor in the starting time. lineup. I know and we're not talking about it, missed it, field goals I now. I think it's my turn. So <laughs> then at the end of the game, when Baker finally got protected on the first play of the whole game that he got protected, he just wings one to somebody named Seth DeValve, some like fourth string tight end for a touchdown. Can we see that play? This is a rocket now. Oh, there we go. That's Baker Mayfield. Give him a little bit of time, and that's what's going to happen. Okay, he well, let me, no time. So, what's the measure? If you don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. what quarterback couldn't you give time that couldn't do that, Jenny? Hmm. I don't know. This is Baker Mayfield. I'll take Baker over Sam Darnold. That's who the you whole, got. You got Sam Darnold. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. That's what separates quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Is the ability when the situation is chaotic, when you're not getting the, mm -hmm. the kind of protection that you should or you got in practice, mm. can you still make those plays? Mm -hmm. So now the rookie quarterback is caught in the crossfire that is just like open warfare now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. We saw it coming in hard knocks because they were at it I in hard knocks. I saw it coming before they hired him. Okay, there you go. Because Todd Haley's been a head coach and Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator, has been a head coach and all of a sudden they're at war over authority and control. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden Hugh was saying last week, and he apologized for it after the game yesterday, but he said, you know, last week, I got to take more control. I want to have some, you know, some – 
input. impact or input yeah. on the play calling. Yeah. And if here I we re- go. How would you like to be a rookie caught in that crossbar? Well, I'll tell you what. What I would do if, I, if, if I'm the head coach yeah. and I make a recommendation, this is not, this is not a request. <laughs> this is an order. Mm-hmm. This is a direct order. This is, I don't request you to do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I request. You know, when you send an invitation, such and such requests your presence. No, no, no. This is not a request. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you what you're going to do. Now, Skip, there's a reoccurring thing with Todd Haley. Mm-hmm. He and Big Ben couldn't get along. Remember when he was calling plays in Arizona? I do. Him and, uh, him and uh, Anquan, Q, almost got into it on the sideline. Him and Terrell T- Owens T-O. got into it. So yeah. there's a reoccurring. We keep talking. We talk, I agree. We like common denominators. Right. So, there's been, so if I'm Hugh Jackson, I'm like, look here, Todd. <clears throat> I don't ask you to do anything. I tell you what to do. And until, uh, until I'm relieved of my duty as a head coach, mm-hmm. when I tell you to run the ball, you run the ball. Okay. If I tell you to throw it, you throw it. Something's got to give. Somebody's yeah. got to go. And that's what all the reports yesterday said. Somebody's going either Hugh or Todd. And I'm with you. It would seem like it would be Todd, but I'm not sure about that because mm-hmm. Hugh came into this year 1-31. and 31, Yeah, so. but Hugh was a play caller. Mm-hmm. So I'll fire Todd Hale and I call my own plays. Okay. And I'm going down with my ship. That's this is my ship. I'm the head coach, and if I'm going to get fired, I'm going to get fired calling my plays, doing it my way. So bye-bye, Todd Haley. Mm -hmm. Kick rocks. Well, the new GM, John Dorsey, did not hire Hugh. So will he side with Todd Haley or Hugh? I don't know. Well, I'm going to see who he's going to side with because I'm getting him out the door. Mm -hmm. So either he he gots to go. Mm -hmm. Hugh says, look, I'm still the head coach. Hmm. You got a couple of years left on that contract. So if y'all want to fire me, y'all still got to pay me. But let me go and earn this money to see if I can turn this thing around. Mm -hmm. But that's what I would do if I was Hugh Jack. Now they got some mutiny going on on defense. And I must say, the defense really let me down. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I don't like that Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett took Great players. Took a shot at his coordinator. Great players don't know. I don't recall. And Mm -hmm. I was in my prime Mm -hmm. when Reggie White and Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, Bruce Smith and all Mm -hmm. these great. I never heard them say (sighs) the game plan. When you're great, you, you're broader than a game plan. You think that you think LT had a game plan skill? No, but you think Miles Garrett is saying we should have kept it simple like we did the first time and just, just played our base defense. No tricks, no wrinkles. But that's the thing, yep. Skip. When people watch you on tape, when yep. you play, no. what do you think they go back and do? Okay, okay that's what they've done. So you have to do other things because they prepare for that. Mm-hmm. Your job is to go get to the quarterback, so no matter what the play. I, so I got me. it. Okay, so... The rookie quarterback is mm-hmm. caught in all this upheaval, this chaos. No, 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 no. Head down, mm-hmm. butt up, yeah. ears closed. Mm-hmm. That doesn't affect you. You go do your job. It's hard to be the quarterback. I've been in the qualifier. Mm-hmm. I was in a situation in Denver in 1992 when John and, 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 and uh, Dan Reeves were going back and forth. Mr. Mm-hmm. Bowler was going to have to make a decision. That didn't affect Shannon. Because guess what? Hey, you're not the quarterback. I wanted the job. Mm-hmm. So I'm worried about what's going on with them. But guess who else wasn't going to have a job? Me. Mm-hmm. Go and do your job. Mm-hmm. If you if, if he what he's if he's what you said he is. He is. Well, what did I well he got to show me. All I'm right. from you know I was from Missouri. I know. Well, maybe next week. You from Missouri too? Mm-hmm. No, Minnesota. Okay. I'm from Missouri. Show me. Okay, well, it's taking on uh, Pat Mahomes next week. So we got Ooh, that one to look forward to. So over. maybe he'll mm-hmm. show you there. Jenny, stop. Maybe. Pat it's going to be a fun one. About five tubs. What about Cam Newton and the Panthers? Are Cam. they starting to look like contenders? We'll discuss next. No mercy. The Carolina Panthers quietly have one of the best records in the NFC. They moved to 5-2 and two yesterday after blowing out the Ravens. Cam Newton threw two touchdown passes and ran for another in the win. All right, Shannon, are you surprised by how well Cam is playing? No, I'm not surprised. Um, I talked to someone very close to Cam, and Cam went back into the lab realizing that a lot was going to be on his plate. Um, Hmm. He knows that when the Carolina win, he gets a lot of the credit, and when they lose, he gets a lot of the blame. But Cam knows and he knew that since his MVP season, he hadn't played like that in a very long time. And if you look at him now, those numbers are very comparable as far as passer rating, yards per game, his interception rate is down. But one thing that they're doing, Skip, is they're protecting him. Cam has only been sacked 10 times. He's sacked over the last two years. He was sacked 71 times. That's too many hits on your quarterback. I think North Turner has done a great job. North Turner, in his system, is under the center, five steps, throw the football, Skip. Bang eights, six routes, come back, roll out, or, or speed outs. That's what he is. 
But he's doing a lot of this with Cam from the shotgun, and he's doing it from the zone read, allowing him to throw the football, allowing him to throw RPOs. Mm -hmm. I've come to the realization, instead of saying, you know what, they need to have a running back to risk to run the ball and take the pressure, Cam's going to lead the team in rushing. That's just the way it is, Skip Bayless. I wish there was a better way that I could, uh, uh, I could define what's going on in Carolina, but Cam is their best running back. He also happens to be the quarterback. He's in phenomenal shape. A couple of years ago, he changed his diet. So mainly he only eats seafood now. He doesn't mm -hmm. eat, you know, meat products. You know, yep. uh, I think he's done away with dairy. Hmm. You follow him on IG. He's doing cardio. He's swimming early in the morning. He's putting his time in. So when the person told me that Cam went back in the lab, mm -hmm. reassessed where he was and where he wanted to be, he knew he was not living up to what Cam Newton should be. Mm -hmm. He is now. Cam is special, um, and, and I'm happy to see what he's been able to do. They're going to be a major player in this. Now, Skip, I don't know if they can catch the Saints and win this division, but I do believe they will be a wild card, and the NFC South will get two teams out of this division. Mm -hmm. But Cam Newton is playing like the Cam Newton in 2015. He is, and I'm shocked. Hmm. He is completing 66% of his passes, which is a career high to this point and he's on pace to throw his second most touchdown passes and his best ever or his lowest ever interceptions. Mm -hmm. That's pretty great. Mm -hmm. I got to know North Turner very well back in the days I was writing books about the Dallas Cowboys, spent a lot of time around him, and the North that I got to know then I thought would be fire and water with Cam, like <laughs> it just wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. I thought they would clash early and often, and then the buffer was supposed to be somebody that Cam could go to and talk to, and it's Scott, North's son, is the quarterback coach. Mm. So you don't even have a buffer. It's like the, the quarterback coach and the coach, oh, it's father and son. So it's you against the father and son if it comes to that, but it, clearly they're not clashing at all. Right. It's possible Norv has mellowed a little bit and finally said, I'm going to try something different because his first product was Troy Aikman, obviously, who's yeah. pure drop-back passer as you will ever see, mm -hmm. an uh, absolute dart thrower from the pocket. But wasn't he there with Jim Everett? I think he had Jim Everett first at the Rams. At the Rams, but he wasn't the quarterback. He was right. the receiver coach. coach. Right. So he wasn't even coaching the quarterback, <laughs> but I, I got you. <laughs> but, but, again, the guy I know coaching Troy Aikman, and he was just great with Troy. In fact, he turned around Troy's career early on when Troy was struggling with other coordinators. It, it, all he knew was drop back passing. Right. And Phillip now Rivers is, in San Diego. You know, that's what I, I will one say this. Cam is delivering the football the best I've ever seen as yep. far as throwing it. Yep. I've, I've not seen him throw it like this. You know, QBR does not like Cam because he's 14th in the NFL at 65, which is just some above average. And it's because he, he makes a few big plays. He'll miss some smaller plays. Mm -hmm. And – they, they won't be great on third down, but, but you're right. He's their best running back, and he's barely holding off, believe it or not, Mitchell Trubisky for the quarterback rushing league so far because he's got 309 yards to Mitchell's 296 yards rushing. But Cam does it as a running back. He's got call plays. Trubisky just takes off and scrambles correct. and has big gains. So what are the new toys here? Well, I told you DJ Moore is my favorite receiver in the whole draft, and Cam's got him now. And they went and got him Torrey Smith, so he's got another veteran deep threat receiver. Torrey didn't catch a pass yesterday. Well, he, did he was not. injured. He did not. But Greg, I think and, the biggest Greg thing. Greg Olson is back now. That's, you know, mm -hmm. That's huge for him. Funches is their leading receiver, and obviously little McCaffrey is a great security blanket. You can toss it to him or occasionally hand it to him and take a little heat and pressure off. So I, I like him a lot. They got two games with New Orleans, two of the last three weeks. Right. And, that, that, and you know what? Who knows? I, I said I don't think they can catch him, but those last two games might be for the division. Well, I told you, New Orleans has the toughest closing schedule of any contender. Yeah. So that's going to be tough for them. But remember, Cam, the, the reason Cam's really impressed me is they barely lost to Atlanta. They lost by seven in Atlanta and by six at <coughs> excuse me, Washington. And, so, but guess what? <sighs> And they got a defense that can get after you. They can pressure you. And they got the best middle back in football. No. Nope. Oh, Luke Keekley. Ah, yeah. yeah. oh, Skip. Yeah. He thumping, folks. I mean, Baltimore is not a slouch now. Mm -hmm. Baltimore is a, very, is a very good team. Yeah, they thump at home. We've got to see if they can start winning on the road. But I'm still not convinced that Norv and Cam will be a good marriage all the way through the season. I don't know. When it gets a little colder and the pressure rises, I just don't know. Cam built for pressure. Well, Cam is built for pressure. I, mean, I don't see, know what. I mean, think about what he had to go through his senior year. Yeah. And he ain't miss a beat. 
oh, your daddy did this, he tried to sell that, and we about might have to suspend you. Think and, of what he went through at Florida. Yeah. He gets booted out and goes and it, to Blinn Junior College and wins the national championship. And then he's on home. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's, what, 17 nothing on the road at Bama. Mm-hmm. And Cam say, watch this. Watch this. Noise. Huh? Sensational. So I don't worry about Cam. Yeah. I don't worry about Cam. Well, I think the division is worried about Cam right now because he is be. playing at his highest level. This is MVP level. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. His, his, the numbers are very, very – only four yards difference in mm-hmm. passing per game than what he threw in his MVP season. Mm-hmm. But like you said, that 66% completion. Because mm-hmm. Cam has never been a high completion percentage mm-hmm. guy. He throws the ball down the field and sometimes it's motion because he throws a lot off his back foot. The ball tails on him or it slide, uh, uh, sails on him. Mm-hmm. But Cam is playing unbelievable this year, and I'm, I'm happy for it. Mm-hmm. He wanted to get back to that MVP year. He said before the season that it has haunted him. He wants to get back to it. All right. A quarterback in a different position. Yesterday, tough day for James mm. Winston. Really, it's been a tough season for the guy. Is he going to ever start again in Tampa? We'll discuss next. No mercy. The Bucks lost a close one to the Bengals yesterday. 37-34, and all the blame is on Jameis Winston. He tied a career high with four interceptions, including a pick six in the third quarter. Jameis was then benched and replaced by Ryan Fitzpatrick, who led the Bucks all the way back to a tie. In Winston's four starts this year, he has thrown 10 interceptions. After the game, Jameis and Dirk Cutter talked about the QB situation. Let's hear it. We don't need to talk about I mean, today's not the day I have to decide that, right? I mean, I'll, I don't have any problem making decisions, and I'll make it when this time's right, but now is probably not the right time to make it. I can't speak on Mother Nature like you're going to play games like that, uh, but I, got, I just can't turn the ball over. i got to fix it. It was very humbling, uh, but uh, it's not about me. Uh, it's my fault that we were in that position. Uh, he had to make a decision, and Fitz came in there and fought his tail off. And our offense uh, responded uh, greatly, and we came back and tied that game up and gave us a, gave gave ourselves a chance. All right, Shannon, that one was tough. Is uh, Jameis finished in Tampa? <sighs> Skip, this is tough because they've already picked up his option for twenty point nine million in year five. The thing is, it's only guaranteed against injury. Yeah. Now, this might be an RG3 situation. Remember, Skip, they wouldn't let RG3 get on the field hmm. because he gets an injury. Now you're on the hook for $21 million. Hmm. The more I look at it and the more I think about it, I think he's played his last down for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because I thought he would say, well, you know what? Maybe he can get back in there if Fitz throws five interceptions. But are you willing to run the risk of him getting injured and he be on the hook for $21 million next year. I believe they're moving on from Jameis Winston after the season. I felt that before he even got back that this was going to be his last year. Yep. There are too many things that have happened that Jameis put himself in harm's way. You know, um, bad decision. You know, they say repeated mistakes are choice. Mm. Okay. Mm. Jameis keeps putting himself in those bad positions, Skip. That's a choice. He's making bad choices, Mm -hmm. bad decisions. And then his play on the field, four starts, ten interceptions. Skip, you can't win with that. Mm -mm. You can't have that. So the quarterback that I believe for Tampa long term is currently not on their roster. Mm -hmm. So I believe Fitz is probably going to bring this thing home. They're not going to want to run the risk of Jameis getting hurt and have to be on the hook for $21 million. And it's reported that D. Jack, Deshaun Jackson, wants, wants to be out, says, you know, Jameis is turning the ball over like Jay Cutler, and I can't mm-hmm. deal with it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we're going to find out tomorrow, because I think the trade deadline is tomorrow, about 4 o'clock Eastern time. Yep. So we'll see what's going to transpire. But I believe he's played his last down in Tampa. So do I. And in the past, I've defended Jameis, not for off the field, but on the field, and I thought it was – the guy, I, I just said from the start, he'll be better than Marcus Mariota, and I still think he's better than Marcus, but he didn't play like it yesterday, and I just think his time is up in Tampa. They're, they're only three and four, so it's not like a complete disaster, right. but I think the fans would prefer Fitz Magic because he's yes. just more fun to watch. Yes. And by the way, Fitz Magic is 13 touchdowns to only five interceptions. I know he's capable of throwing four or five, oh, yeah. but his QBR is third in the NFL, and he does qualify, so he's he's having a great year. Yes. They're two and two with him as a starter. They're one and two with James. But remember what I said about him? Mm-hmm. No expectations. Yep. They're yeah. down by two and a half touchdowns, so what's the expectation? If you lose this game, who cares? There's no pressure on him. Mm-hmm. He boom, 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 tie the game, get the two-point conversion, tie the yep. game. They get to walk off field. We'll see. Now, 
He's back into the starting mm -hmm. lineup. Because remember, how did Jameis get in the starting lineup? Get in the starting lineup? He went to Chicago and mm -hmm. Fitzpatrick and threw three more interceptions he did. after he had thrown interceptions, what, on that Monday night game? He did. So, but knowing that, Skip, I got 21 million. If this guy get hurt, I'm gonna be on the hook, and I really want to move on. And think only Blake Bortles uh, since 2015 has more turnovers. Yeah. Only Bortles. Mm. Nah, Jameis, I, I'm sorry, bro. Mm. You had every opportunity to give you every opportunity mm. to succeed, and uh, you haven't come up with the good. So, just for perspective, would you believe that Tampa Bay's defense has now fallen to dead last in points allowed, 33.3 a game? That is horrendously bad. Yeah. And they it, lost Quan Alexander, right? Yep, they lost Quan Alexander. And as you said, Deshaun wants out. And I have never been very impressed with Dirk Cutter, Jason Lick, their GM. I, I don't know, after hard knocks of two years ago, okay. it, it just left me wanting more from both of them. Mm -hmm. And I just think this whole thing's going to get Blown house up. cleaned yep. by the Glazer family. Yep. I, I just think at some point they're just going to say, enough, we need to start over. Yeah. They got fits just to get them through the year mm -hmm. and keep people moderately right. happy. And probably maybe bring Fitz back as a backup. Because or, or, he's like the ultimate backup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think the thing is, you you know, you look to go into the draft and you get a quarterback and you can have Fitz, you know, possibly groom him and lead him for half the season or a season. But I just don't see Jameis com coming back at $21 million. Mm. That's, that's uh, only guaranteed against injury. Mm. You don't want to run that risk and have him get injured and he's on the book on your books for 21 mil. Well, we're back to picking quarterbacks and as you always say, what did he show you in college? He made bad decisions off and on the field because he forced a lot of balls. Now, again, I love him as a leader because he wants to win at all costs. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to try to make that play because I know my teammates need me to make right. the play. Well, if you throw it to the other team, they don't need you to do that. No, it's yep. yeah, think about it. This dude has Mike Evans, who's a top receiver. He is. D. Jack's oh. still one of the best. D. Jack might be the one of the you know, top two or three deep threats in the history to ever play the game. You got O.J. Howard. That's pretty you, good. So you got guys that can make plays for you. Just keep it out of the other team's hand and let your guys make plays for you. But for whatever reason, Skip, if you have a bad habit at the quarterback position in college, you normally bring that trait with you. And what he did in college was turn the ball over, especially his, uh, uh, his sophomore year, mm -hmm. at an alarming rate. Yep. And he's turned the ball over since he's been in the NFL at an alarming rate. Yep. And when you turn the – first of all, if you got that – if you're last in defense, the last thing you would want them to do, Skip, is to be out on the field more than they absolutely have to be. And when they just gave up a touchdown, and then you put them right back on the field because you just threw a pick, mm -hmm. that only exacerbates the situation. Mm -hmm. So Tampa is not is Tampa is not in a very good spot. They are but, not. But this serves them well. You remember you fly, fired Lovey Smith after eight and eight. Oh, yeah. oh, you wanted Dirk Cutter because Philly, you know, that Philly came snooping and they were about to hire him away. You know, Ooh, Carson. Oh, and you okay. You get what you deserve mm -hmm. because Lovey, Lovey still should have still had I, that I, job. I agree with that. You are exactly right. And now they fired another defensive coordinator. Mike Smith. Yeah. He was with me in Baltimore. I love Smitty. Yeah. Not a good position for that. But he's had a lot of chances. You know, it might yeah. just be the end. All right, we're gonna be right back. We've got more undisputed coming up next. No mercy. We do have some breaking news. Reports say Hugh Jackson has just been fired by the Browns. Jackson only won three games, lost 36 during his three seasons in Cleveland. Shannon, what is your reaction to the news? Uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, Mary Kay Cabot, who writes for the Cleveland, I think, plain dealer skip. Yeah. And when it comes to the Cleveland Browns, she is the Bible. She does. Uh, and yeah. she said it was going to be either Hugh yeah. Jackson or Todd Haley. Mm -hmm. One yeah. of those guys were going to have to go, where they made it abundantly clear who they wanted to leave. But I'm surprised. Here's the thing. At 1-15, and 15, you don't fire Hugh. 0-16, oh, you don't fire Hugh. 2-5-1, and one, Hugh, you got to go. What did you expect him to be, 6-2 and two or 7-1? and one? Skip, they need to get up out of here. You know good well Cleveland's not very good. They're, they're, hard knocks gave us a false sense of what the Cleveland Browns could be. Mm. Uh, I think I had them at what, six? I think I had them at six games. I think you said they could possibly win nine mm -hmm. if they started Baker Mayfield. Well, if Josh Gordon is still there, that would happen. Man, stop, Skip. Well, what do you mean stop? Is he not Tom Brady's new favorite receiver? Well, if You don't think he'd be helping Baker Mayfield If right he now? had showed up on time okay, and not looked like he was possessed. Okay, all right. Well, that's fair. 
I'm good with this, and I have supported and defended Hugh over the years, but he lost me during hard knocks, as I've said many times on this show, and I think he got in a power struggle with two former head coaches who are big personalities at both his coordinators, and they're firing at each other during hard knocks, vying for attention and control of the football team and of the hard knocks, you know, who can take over hard knocks. For a while, it was Greg Williams, then it was Todd Haley. Hugh's fighting back, and Hugh just felt like he was flailing to me now for the, mm. the last, I don't know, four or five games. And he's trying to, to fight with Todd Haley publicly last week and tr- try to get some new impact and input on the game plan, and it's just wrong. And finally, John Dorsey said, no, that's enough. And guess what? You wasn't John Dorsey's guy. You, I, yeah. We're not surprised. Yeah. I, I was kind of surprised mm-hmm. that he was able to keep the job I'm, after I I, John Dorsey was hired because normally, Skip, like you say, GM, Brink, I want mm-hmm. my guy. I want yeah. someone I hired. I know this guy. But they gave Hugh a chance. But, uh, you know, I, I'm not surprised. And, uh, you know, Hugh had his opportunity. He didn't yeah. get the job done. So he has another year left on his contract. He's still going to make some money. But I, I still believe Hugh is an excellent play caller mm-hmm. and deserves and will get he, another He is, job. and I hope he gets a coordinator job because that's what I think he's best at, and he deserves a shot. Right. But these guys, this was a troubled football team, and this will clarify the situation, and maybe Baker will start to rally here. Uh, stop rallying nothing. They, they gave us a false sense watching them mm-hmm. on hard knock. Oh, oh this team can win now. seven, yeah. eight games. Mm-hmm. I didn't say they was going to win those mm-hmm. seven, eight games. Yeah. I told you, best case scenario, six. And I was being very told generous. Me Rashard Higgins was going to get hurt and Derek Willis. I don't think you said that. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports One of One.